What's up, everybody? Welcome to Money Lab Live. It is Wednesday, the 17th of February, 2021. Welcome. Today, uh, we're going to do things a bit different. Do- doing something I've never done before. I have a friend on the show today. His name is Miles Beckler. Miles Beckler, welcome to the show. Yo, 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 yo. What's up, man? Happy to be yo. here. Happy New Year? Yo, yo. Uh, pff, dude, Wait, were you, yeah, happy... were you on in the New Year? Probably, but it's it's been Chinese New Year since, so we're, oh, we're it it's now been. the year it's, of it's the metal. It's called the Lunar New Year, by the way. Oh, I was unaware. Was that? Mm-hmm. Did I just do something inappropriate no. live on YouTube? <laughs> I don't think. You okay, did. well, if I offended anyone, I apologize. No, um, Lunar New Year just began, and it's the year of the ox, and mm-hmm. we're moving out of the year of the cock, I believe. So now we have the year of the metal ox. So it means do work like an ox, right? Like do the freaking work Uh and metal means money. So do the work and make some money. That's what 2021 is all about. Last year was what? The year of the rooster, also known as the. Because I think you just got me demonetized by saying. (laughs) But it's a rooster. You just Uh, came in. You just came in with hot cock just right away. And then YouTube is like, no, no. Absolutely not. Well, luckily, you're not doing this for the money. Of course not. Why would I do anything? Yes. Um, for the money. So we're going to look at websites today, and we're going to do website um, teardowns. I don't have a better do word it. than that. Do you have a better word than yeah. teardown? Website improvement suggestions 2.0. Because teardown kind of is like, yeah, we're going to tear it down. And like, no, no, we're going to be encouraging. Um, and it's just we're going to look for, you know, run what some other folks have done through the lens of, I mean, together we have like 30 plus years of experience doing this stuff, which is absurd to freaking say. True. Um, so we're just going to kind of, you know, offer some suggestions and it's going to work two ways. Obviously, the people who submitted uh, get to get uh, value, but but everyone watching is going to be able to kind of understand how like the process, how we look at things and also kind of some of the ideas. It's going to just be relevant to Anybody who has a website, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, and we have six websites that we're going to look at today. Um, just to kind of go through them real Perfect. quick, in, in case – I'm going to actually do it real quick and, and show you, and then we'll get into do it. it. So uh, right. right now we have a site called Meal Prepify. That's our first – our first, uh, and these are all – by the way, these were all submitted by people via Twitter. Okay. Oh, cool. Awesome. So, uh, we have at Miles Beckler, Twitter people. There you go. We have at uh, we have Star Wars Loot.com, which should be a fun one. We have uh, and I figured this one is a personal website. So we have uh, Dave Stewart Sweet. Jr. Good. Um, awesome, Dave. And then we have allergy foods.com. OK, so that should be fun. Smart. Two food, two yep. food sites so far. And then we have this one, which I thought was interesting, called Surges.co. It's uh, marketing hmm. tool reviews, but it's very nicely designed. Um, then we have HelloMusicTheory.com, yep, yep. and that's it. That's what those, those are our six, right? That's six. sweet. Yeah. I like it. Uh, uh, good random smattering. Yeah, I, I what I tried to do was get some that were, you know, I wanted I wanted like a uh, what do you call it when you just like one person, like a self brand, like a personal personal brand. Solopreneur, yeah, totally. Yep. Uh, I wanted something that was sort of outside affiliate marketing, something with affiliate marketing, you know. So there's kind of a smattering of all different types of businesses, and yep. what we're going to go over, I think, in this uh, kind of what I what I what I imagine is we'll go through each site individually. I've ran all of these sites through GT Metrics for page speed, so we'll Good. measure and and I'll I can give technical advice on page speed, and I can tell you. Um, that two of the six are almost flawless. Perfect. So, wow, that's so really we only have four to kind of help out with the page speed side of things. I want to do some SEO, technical SEO uh, help as well. And then yep. um, you're going to th- – uh, what I'd like you to sort of be, you, my friend, is copywriting and more of like – okay. Yep. Feel. I already saw a few things. Yeah, yep. I don't. I feel like that's like my weakest, my weakest thing. I, I you know, I, I can look at a site and go like, that's eh, well written. But I don't know if it's like compelling. Um, yep. So no, totally. Um, yeah, and then uh, what's the other thing? So design. You know. All right. So, um, are you ready to do this? I'm ready. I was born ready for. We this. have a whole segment, and here's 
Here it goes. Are you ready? Here we goes. Oh, we have an intro, ready? like our own intro. We have our, we well, it, it's mostly featuring me, because okay, as it should be, self-deprecating humor. And here we go. Homepage improvement. So glad I got to be part of that. That was incredible. There you go. This is, we're making history here, folks. I feel like we should do. I need to do more of these, but we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Yes. And I, I spent a long time on that intro, like making that whole thing. And so I've only got this is my first time to use. It. I, I did it like a month ago. I love it. I had to write the song. I had to go. You know how many times I went into the mic? Yeah. That was so. No, not I didn't quite get the uh, part uh, right. I need a I need an extra. Uh, uh, there you go. All right, we're gonna start with meal prepify. So um, I can tell you right off yep. the bat that meal prepify, uh, as far as speed is concerned, it has a good. Uh, it's got some blocking scripts, and I think it's mostly because it's filled with JavaScript, and I think it's uh, probably because of ads, but. What do you think of this site kind of right off the bat? I like it. So um, one of the things is I really like how simple the the actual homepage looks. I mean, mm-hmm. I think so many people when they get when they're getting going, they're like, I need a fancy theme. Mm-hmm. And this is I love that this is a simple yet effective looking theme. Um, and I'm logging into my tool. I'm going to run a little site data uh, analysis on this. Okay. Um, and meanwhile, I just want to go back to this page speed stuff. It looks like, um, yeah, Google tag services. So that's probably, um, that's probably what do you call it? Google tag manager. GTA, uh, yeah. there's some, yeah, there's a lot of JavaScript going on here. And if we look at, I mean, a lot of times when I do page speed analysis, you know, analysis, I'll look at the waterfall because then you can see from yeah. here, you know, what's blocking things. And it looks like we have ad thrive, which is causing, um, yep. you know, some hold up. And it doesn't look like the other thing too. And, and I think this is so crazy, but like having Google fonts on your website feels like a really easy thing to do, but holy shit, does that slow down your website? You have to have um, like, so here, here's for everybody paying attention. What he's talking about here is, when websites load, it's dynamic, right? Mm-hmm. So we're pulling all kinds of information together from different locations, and that builds the page. Right. So I think it was Ad Thrive, right? So yeah. they're pulling an advertisement when that page loads from the advertisement server. So we have to wait on that. And then mm-hmm. the fonts are coming from Google instead of having fonts that load natively, instead right. of hard coding in your own internal advertising that o- loads from your server or from your CDN super fast, we're dynamically pulling all of this stuff together. And the more things we layer on, obviously, pretty fonts and ads generate mm-hmm. revenue, there's a time and a place, but but there's kind of like, there's trade-offs at every single level, and we just need to be conscious of this. And this waterfall report is where you can kind of see what's working, what's going on, where and how. Yeah, and this is kind of the order of how a page loads. And so anything that's sort of you know, stopping it from loading to the next thing is usually a problem. And here, you know, there, if you're if you're using something like Ad Thrive, that's how this person's making money. Um, and yep. and and I think like there's this is why I don't do ads, to be honest with you, because right. I'm such a page speed nerd that I'm like I have no uh, patience for having to go reach out to another server. If if I'm gonna do ads on my own site, then I'm gonna serve them up natively and sell them myself, yep. which I did. I don't recommend it for people who are right. anything like me, but I mean, it's certainly an avenue to go. But yeah, you can make a lot of money with these ad networks. I mean, Zoic, Ad Thrive, uh, Mediavine. You know, I everybody constantly gets me to to do it. They want me to yeah, do it. Yeah, and I think I like to look at personally. I love taking control of the monetization. So when we hand over our monetization to an ad network, uh, there's that's just saying like, hey, I'm I'm I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about my user, my customer. I don't actually want to curate this to be the absolute best experience for my user. I'm going to outsource a part of that, which means a they're going to take a slice, and b you're not making nearly as much money as you could. Yeah. There are creative ways to build lists and to recommend specific products and to sell your own products to maximize your ROI and 
all of that falls under your page is going to load a lot faster. Right. So like on Swim University, for example, like if you're going to run ads, have ads to your personal, to your actual info That's what I do. products, right? Yeah, and they're all served native. 100%, right? Yeah. And it's super fast and it's server native and it loads and you get a massive ROI, but it requires copywriting and building products. So, so there's a time and a place. Yeah. And it looks like they're, they so, do have their own ads here. So, yeah, I, so I mean, it's definitely something you can do, but I think is you know, the juice worth the squeeze is the question, right? That's one of the things that you want to look at. Now I'm looking at some, uh, data, um, so it looks like their domain authority, the DA is like 33. The page mm -hmm. authority is 29. The citation flow is 35. Trust flow is 11. So like, wow, good ranking, good, good ranking numbers. Um, out of, out of those sure. all and, out of a hundred. Um, no. So technically yes, but I've never seen trust flow much over like 20 or 30. Oh, okay. So, um, domain authority in the thirties page authority. Yeah. All of those are like very, very good numbers. Mm -hmm. Um, the backlink profile looks really solid. So, um, this is, this is growing. I I'd be very curious. And then when I searched site colon their URL in Google, I see about 380 results, which I love that. I mean, okay. this person has been publishing lots and lots and lots of content. So what I would be curious about is, and we don't have this data, is, you know, what's working? What queries, and I would go into Search Console, what queries are bringing you the absolute most traffic? Where, because there's the 80-20 rule, right? So 20% of all this 380 posts are bringing in all of the attention. And then are we just serving AdZoic or Ease or whatever? I don't use uh, any yeah, of those things. I don't thrive, like those yeah. networks. Um, are we, is that the only monetization and like, can you improve the monetization? Um, hmm. that's where I would be. Cause I don't know what their traffic is. I can't see exactly what their traffic is, but like, here we go. Uh, how we make money. It's working. They have an affiliate disclosure. They're using Amazon. Um, and yeah, mostly it looks like ad thrive and Amazon. That's what it looks like. Yep. Uh, yep. so it's at really... this point, it seems to me, sorry for, for John, no, no, but no, it no, seems please, to me, trample. Domain looks good. Okay. Domain the looks domain good. authority looks good. The backlink profile looks good. You can speed it up a little bit. Like everything looks good, mm -hmm. which leads me to believe they're getting good traffic, right? It leads mm -hmm. me to, cause I can't, we, we, I don't have their analytics, so we can't see. And if that's all true, like let's grow an email list, let's make offers and let's figure out ways to go from being a, cause this is the difference, right? So it's, it's like, ah, oh, I'm just doing an affiliate marketing website to generate cash flow. Let's turn this into a full on brand to where you're doing Sunday meal prep tips. You have a video course where you're showing them how to make enchiladas for the week and, and really like owning that. Like I help people take Sunday and they make a huge batch of food on Sunday and then they break it up into all of these little, uh, freezer compartments and they take it to work with them throughout the week. You save money. And like, there's, there's a, a value proposition there for viewers who find this, that's yeah. potentially a lot more valuable than best blender for green smoothies. Yeah, and, and and even things like this. I mean, um, I mean I, this is a this. I'm assuming this is la, uh, lasso. They're using lasso, so uh, I know. I saw I the guess. Pinterest, the Pinterest load thing. I probably would take the Pinterest load off of that because yeah. In well, that, when you hovered over it, it was like pinned to Pinterest right yeah. here. A, I, I have data that says people rarely, if ever, actually use that tool. It takes time to load. And what do you want people to do? You don't want them to pin it. You want them to click on the Amazon link and actually go get it 100 percent. and i and that was something i had to get rid of on swim university because again page speed is a huge importance yep. to me and i know jack just People asked if there was any videos yeah i think there's a video on every post at least at the bottom but i don't think it's their videos they're just you know adding them right. uh this also yep. slows down a website when you when you embed youtube videos on a website without any sort of lazy loading because lazy load. that's the amazon's thing. loading WP all their ad shit yeah, you know, totally. Are you a are you a WP Rocket guy? Hundred percent, all day. Yep. Totally. Uh, turn on lazy load and let it run. Yeah, lazy loading for videos, huge. Um, yep. I mean, I saved so much page speed. Lazy loading for images as well, especially on a site like this, where you know, obviously, you're relying heavily on Pinterest traffic. I'm assuming since you're doing Pinterest style images, um, loading these lazy loading, and I did see a lazy loading. Um, I did see a JS for lazy loading, so I know they're doing it, this lazy load. Uh, and they are using WP Rocket. And what I would do here is I would also employ the 
the YouTube version too, because you can do embeds as well with WP Rocket. Yeah. So what we've got on uh, the site. You know, as far as um, you know, from a design perspective, I mean, everything looks good. It's mobile optimized, obviously. Um, you know, I, personally, I, I think the design needs help a yeah, little bit. For sure, you would say that. Of course, sure. right? I think this yeah. logo being as big and as taking up that sort of like above the fold area could be cut in half, especially because you have a good, you know, this logo is okay, but it's at least long. So the fact that it's long and also this is probably one giant image. So this text could be, you know, something that you add underneath the image so that at least it has searchableness to it. But what I would do is make this smaller, create an actual sort of header that's separate from everything, and then perhaps not even have the tagline. The tagline is kind of useless. You could put the tagline in the alt tag of the image and then serve the image up as an SVG as opposed to probably looks like a PNG. PNG, um, yeah. So, or maybe that's not. Maybe geeky. it's the whole width of the, of the page. And obviously, if you See, do that, I'm... what's that? Well, and I agree with you, right? So there's there's little incremental things, but like I think I think it's time to turn this into a business, right? Like I think it's time to go beyond affiliate marketing. And this is one of the things that I feel like mm -hmm. I've I've you know I've done affiliate marketing case studies, affiliate marketing builds. Um, like Swim University is a business. You yeah. have your own products. You have an email list. Like I I feel like it's time for them to step up to that next level because everything looks like it's working, but it's like there's no opt in. There's no seven day thing. There's You're no right, email there list. I, my, I didn't even notice that. Right. I looked at every, I went on every nav. I was like, oh, meal prep recipes, maybe that's. And I think at least having, you don't have to have a pop-up per se, but I guarantee if they're getting traffic, a pop-up would get a lot oh, yeah. of freaking subscribers. Oh, yeah. So my first business online, it collapsed down to zero because I was only supported by social media traffic on this thing called MySpace. And MySpace turned off my links. And I wasn't building an email list. And had I been building an email list, mm. I would have been able to keep making money afterwards because the list is the actual asset. A lot of people got hammered with the Google update in December, right? And their their traffic went from, you know, whatever it was to, to new normal, which is terrible. And well, had you been building right. a list while it was good, it, it's less of a, a thing. So to me, it's it's time to really step up, and it's like, so what does it mean to make it a business? Who are your people? What are they looking for? Where? Who? Like, what are their? What's their life like? I have a customer avatar video series that really helps you get into the mind of your people because the people who visit this website are buying all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Oh, way more than what they're doing, and like, get them on your list, build a relationship with them, help them solve all of the other problems in their lives, and be really fun and engaging via email. Oh my gosh, you're you're profit will go fucking to the moon. Dang, right. I just totally demonetized you. No, again, you can ball. just, no, F, the F word's okay, but when it's not it's mentioned sex stuff, it's it's over, game over. Roosters? <laughs> who so knows? For everybody who's just tuning in, I made a reference to the year of the rooster, and I used the C word, so I demonetized him, but uh, alas, <laughs> here we go. Maybe I'll never monetize at all, but I, I do agree with that. I mean, I think in general, this is a site that is ripe for its own products. And right. so I know there's a subreddit around meal prep, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I know that because I've just looked at it before. So I just, I know this is a big enough thing and people want handholding. People watch yeah. cooking shows. People want that next level of handholding and you can start to make little seven, $17 video products on how to make. Yeah. There, there's just, there's a million and one so ways. Much. It's a lot of testing. Yeah. It's a lot of testing to figure out what works, but the profitability and the, um, the, the like, I mean, gosh, like, I just don't want them to see, com continue to be 100% attached to Google and 100% attached to Amazon and 100% well, attached to an ad network for everything. Okay. Right. So you have that. Two sort, yeah. yeah. And that, and that for the, for a category like this, I, I hear Pinterest is great. <laughs> you know, we crush it on Pinterest. Yeah. Pinterest so is incredible. I think, um, so as far as like an, uh, from an SEO standpoint, you don't really think there's anything they could be doing better. Not, not that I see like okay. it literally and and I can't see all the way into it. Right. Um, but it looks like they have great uh, internal linking is working correctly. Their domain authority is good. Their backlink profile looks natural and it yep. looks honest. If they didn't do anything stupid, which is really smart these days. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of like if they're getting traffic, which I assume they should be, if they have uh, a few dozen top rankings. Well, apparently, it's time to think about apparently if they're on ad thrive, then they get at least 100,000 page views a month. Right. 
Right. Thank you, Dan. And it's like, for okay, that, by the way. Totally. And it's like, well, how many? So then all these people, like, what else do they want to buy? What else are they already buying? What else are they willing to subscribe for? Because all those 100,000 people or yeah. page views, so 70,000 people or whatever, who find this site, like, they're all going to buy a bunch of stuff in the next five or six days. Get them on your email list right. and take them on a journey to accomplish what they want to accomplish and sell them all of the things along that path versus right. one chance I'm going to either sell this blender or I'm not. And then you're leaving the site and you may never come back. I mean, it's like, it's, it's a future proofing mechanism for your, for yourself. Turning it into a real business for sure from an affiliate side hustle. And I I think affiliate side, I think, I think this is the way to grow. They're just, it looks like they've graduated phase one and not many people, not many affiliate marketing teachers talk about, um, going beyond affiliate sites to like building a business because they are different things. Um, it's difficult and it, it requires a little bit more thinking. Um, yes. versus kind of like a complaining that Amazon changed or B complaining that Google changed and continuing sure. to do the same thing over and over and over. But, you know, as an entrepreneur, we're just always looking, where can we add value and mm-hmm. where's the, the unmet need for my audience. And like, once you have the audience showing up to your website over and over and over, you've won, like, like literally you've won. So let's just reorganize things and, um, maximize what we've got going on here. Um, yeah, it's worth it. Makes sense. Become a direct uh, response marketer. Yeah. I think, uh, and as far as page speed, you're using WP Rocket, so you're kind of already there. Uh, I just think it would be, I think you could improve um, your fonts. I think you could use WebSafe fonts. I use WebSafe fonts on all my websites. I don't even like mess with like loading my own fonts, even though you can do that. Uh, fonts no one cares about. You know, just Arial works. It works on every single website and it looks pretty good. Um, Futura is another big one. Um, you know, Arial Black, you can use all these. But uh, the other thing, too, as far as um, – and, and you know, obviously, if you do lazy loading on those videos, that's going to really help. That's going to really speed up your website. And if – obviously, like, I don't think you – I mean, can you notice that you've seen zero ads? Right. Well, that's because I have an ad blocker. <laughs> so – right. It's, it's, you which, know, if you're, which I do too, which Firefox is now leading with on the front end, which brave has built in, which duck, duck go has built in. And all of these Ooh. things are getting more and more popular. Hence it being important to build a list to future proof your business. Why do you think that is? What part? Why do you think, um, these, these native browsers are kind of like adding pay, you know, ad blockers ads are annoying. People are right. banner blind anyways, right? And and when you sneak in ads, it can it can different things can be snuck in. It slows things down. Things can be loaded unsecurely. It can break an HTTPS. There's right. there's just a lot of issues with it. But I think ultimately, like if I'm building a browser, I want to make it the cleanest, fastest, smoothest experience for people ever. And if I get rid of ads for people, they're gonna be like, oh my god, this is great. Like I don't see YouTube ads, and it's not because I have like YouTube Red or whatever it's called. Like yeah. I just have ad blockers on at all times, and all the yeah. marketers I know run ad blockers, and it's just a matter of time before it becomes well, the, the default because it's so it's web, annoying. It's so web 1.0. You know, having yep. ads on a site, I think, and I and I, there, it, you know, you're seeing it happen. It's it's people are going to be moving away from it. The other thing, Susan just asked this question about, um, can Google Fonts be uploaded so they don't slow down a site? Yes, uh, you can download the font. You can you can add it to your website to your theme, and then you can preload it so that your website is faster. So there is a way to do it if you want to use a certain thing. In fact. Um, well, Susan's in Money Lab Pro. So in our in the page speed for bloggers course in Money Lab Pro, I actually talk, I think they have two lessons on just fonts on how to do that. So, and then the other thing too, for me, it's it's just as, as a design, I agree, I like simplicity in the design. Um, the, the reason they have a sidebar here is probably because of ads, because otherwise there's no point to having this area here. And everybody's yeah. probably I would I would imagine that most of the traffic going to the site is on mobile, uh, so right. so nobody sees w- that anyways. Yeah, so I I would I would get rid of it. I, this this site could be like lightning fast. I mean crazy fast, and it could be just everything could be minimized. Um, smaller logo. The the I like how there's not a lot of you know navigation at the top. That's cool, but you could put that even higher, and then all of your content kind of rises up. So. That's just like we can move on, but I want to give a shout out to at PF Geeks for sending this in. So that was that was, that was yep. awesome. I appreciate that. And I and I, I you like know, it. I think I'm doing great. Yeah. All right. So let's move on to Star Wars loot. This is um, this is from Mason Ware. 
who uh, it's at, at Mason D Ware on Twitter, uh, W E A R, and uh, also somebody in Money Lab Pro. And I love this site, but this is a, from my understanding, a hundred percent affiliate marketing play. So I'm nervous from number one, the fact that they're using a, a big time name. And I am not an intellectual property lawyer. Um, there's a girl named Shantavia on Twitter who is, and she's an internet marketer. Um, but I mean, is it legal to have that brand's trademark in your domain name? Like, I, I honestly would be preparing to get a cease and desist letter from mm -hmm. Lucasfilms saying you are illegally using our intellectual property for uh, commercial purposes. Hmm. Um, and a cease and desist, I think is what would happen, like obviously before like a lawsuit or something, but I don't know the legality of it, but that's, that's instantly where my brain goes is like, okay. uh Oh, danger zone. Are we infringing on somebody's intellectual property? Got it. I mean, I know they're, they merchandise the hell out of their stuff. I mean, clearly like you can get a waffle maker, with Darth Vader. And they want to make money off of every bit and piece. And it's, it's about having it in the, um, the URL is is one that's like because you can't go get like WordPress. You couldn't start a website that says like um, how to WordPress dot com because WordPress is a mark that's owned and registered. At you the really US can't. Patent and trademark. No, you're. You, oh, I mean, is that you why everyone's it. WP? Exactly right mm. because that's not the mark, the actual trademark, and we're we're into the world of intellectual property, um, which large brands, large media corporations will defend their intellectual property. So. If they're not aware, like, I don't know, I'm not trying to be alarmist or anything, no, but, but for people watching who are thinking about starting something, like, you can't go make it, uh, like, DenverBroncosLoot.com. The Broncos are going to come out and, like, Ch -ch -ch yeah. nope, turn it off. We right. make money off that brand, not you. And it, in some senses, I feel like it's it's the same thing. So and you're not saying from a, thinking, from a business perspective, this isn't uh, the problem. It's the name of the site. 100%. Right. Right. 100% it's the URL so I would be thinking about like if this goes sideways a backup plan what am I going to do where am I going to 301 redirect this all because I you know I've received a lot of cease and desist letters uh in my in my adventures. really um and, and, oh yeah and and that's what you would get is, is cease and desist it would say like it would just be kind of a a demand to stop and and essentially you would just want to like do a 301 redirect report it all over and if you're infringing I would do that before I get a cease and desist personally mm. Now, as also, far as, so let's yeah. jump into the data. Um, yeah, please. Uh, oh, um, it loaded super fast for me. Yes, this is um, one the of the sites that. This is one of the sites that was. Um, we are at an A. I mean, yeah, I don't. I mean, Mason knows what he's doing. I know that, so it's. Uh, I wouldn't. I have nothing to say here. <laughs> it's. 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 It's fast. Yeah, uh, 162 posts, which is very good to see. Yep. Um, but I'm showing a really low domain authority. So the domain authority is only seven, um, mm. and the trust flow is a zero. So the last one, we were in the 30s, right? So um, there's a long way to go on on building out that kind of um, – uh, and and it, it's 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 a lack of of backlinks is essentially what it is. And mm. I don't when I say that I'm not like okay go buy backlinks. Like I don't think that's the move. But it's like how do you start building content in a way, or how do you start building your business in a way that you're getting press? Yeah. Right. You need to get you need to do things that are so darn interesting that people link back to you um, and people share you uh, natively. So it's like almost how do you build that into the content strategy um what is the content on, on, strategy well it's it's literally collecting and reviewing and um uh, correlating collating all star wars things like if it's about star wars it's here type thing mm. yeah so it could be star wars news um because he's, I, I know I've, we've talked about this a bit, and uh, I kind of, what my advice was to sort of look at building an email list off of this, because right now there is nothing, and having, and putting the content there, because he's getting traffic because, you know, people are looking for these weird little, like, items, you know, they're, they're, yep. they're showing up, and like via search or he, I think, I think most of the traffic comes from social media, which is, a, this is a perfect social media play, right? You yep. could throw up a post and, and I said, you know, what would be interesting to do is, is doctor up the pictures. So you're going to get these. And I know, again, I don't know if I'm crossing into territory that is illegal or not, but 
basically, if you get this picture of Baby Yoda, right, you have this Lego Baby Yoda, which is great, but there's n- nothing about the 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 text. There's nothing about the picture that's any different than what I could see on Lego's website. And so I think, as from a right. sales perspective, you know, putting Baby Yoda in like um, some sort of background that's you know Star Wars themed, and then having like a really kitschy sort of fun you know, description to help sell it, I think would, would certainly help. And then that would help on social media because people might just share it because it's a funny picture and it's a funny description. So I agree. Now click on the, click on the Lego baby Yoda. Yeah. And so when you're mentioning the, the social, oh, so go. they do have an opt-in, but it's there, it's not compelling, right? Like nobody wants a newsletter, right? What we want is a top 10, the seven best, the three cheapest, the, you know, like we want kind of like geeky fandom or new special. products, like alert me when new products are coming out. Cause I think that's what he's there trying to do here. I also think this is a perfect way to star Wars this up, right? You know, let's do it. It could be something more like, uh, may like show me the force or I don't know. Yep. You know, no, I mean that it, it is those those this kinds is the way. of things. Like brand it all the way, like all the way through and through. So then scroll down on this page, take a sure. look like below. Click what? There's no content. Well, yeah. there's just there's no content, right? So literally, and it makes sense when you said this is a social media play. Mm-hmm. So it's like okay, so I'm gonna go make a spin up a bunch of pins. I'm gonna just go pin straight back to this page. They're either gonna buy it or they're not. Right. right. And maybe subscribe, but I, I, I doubt that would even get like 0.2% conversion rate because it's not very compelling. Mm-hmm. Um, hence it not having good domain authority, hence it not being an SEO play. So my question is like, is this just like a churn and bird site? Do they know that they're in this gray area and they're just like, I'm just going to milk it for everything I can while I can. And then all of a sudden, and then it's just going to get shut down. Um, I, I don't I, think I would, so. I would, from from okay. knowing Mason, I don't think so. But but um, I do think that th- I think there's a lot that can be done here, and yep. you know even like a you know as much as I'm against pop ups, I-, I think this actually kind of makes sense to have some sort of maybe exit intent pop up. You can be really funny and really sort of like play even if you don't use the word Star Wars. Like because yes. I I'm thinking about the sports websites. Um, there's a website that w- that we grew up with. Um, man, I can't, I thought I could remember it. I think it starts with a B, but anyway, they sell, they make and sell sports t-shirts and hats and, and gear based around Philadelphia sports teams, okay. but they never mention anything about the actual team. They use the colors. Right. They right. use, uh, I think it's called breaker tees. I want to say that that the might same be same right. type of bird, but it's not that bird. Well, well, no. What they'll do is they they memeify sports, right? So as a sports fan, you know we, you know maybe like in Philadelphia Phillies, I think it was the Phillies or the Eagles, where like Santa came out and we pelted him with snowballs, right? So like that would be a shirt, and anybody yep. who's aware of that, like in Philadelphia, would. Like, oh my God, I want that shirt so bad because it's so it's the it's it's something the Phillies would never sell or the Eagles would never sell right. themselves because it's sort of like a it's I mean, we we think of it as a as a like an endearing moment, but not for the organization. So I think like um this is and again, these are all we're not I'm not saying to sell any I'm not saying to like create your own products at all. What I'm saying is that um just from a branding perspective, there are ways to make it feel Star Wars-esque without literally using the terms or any of their, like, trademarked, uh, you know, copywriting or whatever. 100%. Yep. And and play on the same themes and the same feeling and the same goofiness. So if you click on apparel, um, so Star Wars apparel, right? Like, this mm-hmm. page, it's it seems to be dynamically created. Maybe they maybe they coded that in, but it, it seems like each it's just like a blog roll, just a really custom one. Yeah. So... If that is true, then this page literally has 13 words of text. If you go to the very top, you'll see the only words that are actually a part of this page. Right. Right. So Star Wars apparel. And like how many people are searching for Star Wars t-shirts and this, that, the other? Like to me, that's that's the money is is dominating for the best Star Wars t-shirts. And, you know, the whole like may the fourth be with you because fourth of whatever May. is is star wars day fourth there yeah. you go right oh may 4th of course it is right so so it's like playing on some of those things and um you know starting to do like uh, may the 4th uh like top 10 ways to celebrate uh, may 4th star wars day 
right? Mm. And, and those are the kinds of things that can start to get pressed. Those are the kinds of things that can attract shares and likes and things on social. But again, um, I just I just think we are insanely thin on content on this. Okay. And that's what it is, is there's there's actually no content on the site other than yeah, it's here's the thing to get. It's almost here's like a e commerce site. Hundred percent, it is. Right. It's, it's it is built just like an e commerce site that is using social traffic. And as someone who had social traffic, it worked for a while. It went to freaking zero. Mm. Um, I'm like, oh my gosh, diversify traffic and build an email list. Yeah, I mean, I 100 percent agree. Uh, as as a you know, so as far as page speed, great. Uh, design, great. I mean, this this little like how the top. There's, you can, I don't know if you can see it on your screen, but the stars kind of move in the opposite direction of where you're scrolling, which is kind of cool. Oh, interesting. Um, and that, and still having that happen while the page loads fast is great. Uh, SEO perspective, you're saying content. This, this, this site yep. needs there content. Uh, and there's, and yep. there's certainly keywords you can go after, right? Oh, it's insane. Like the okay. number of keywords around this aren't crazy. Cause again, like Star Wars has been around since what, like 70, nine or 78 right yeah, it's, it's like a that. very long run there's there's a lot and it, it is um gosh especially with all the spin-off things that they're doing at this point in time mm -hmm. um the the super fans out there like you can find super fan websites that'll have thousands of huge long form content and um yeah. the, the potential is, is absolutely massive here um i would just i would really make sure that you're building on a foundation that will remain and i'm talking about the url and i'm talking about the potential of an ip issue. okay yeah because jack's asking do you think that they can do you think they can't build, gain traction or build a following on the site no abs no we're not saying that i think 100 percent. i i think you absolutely could and yeah. then you could get out once it gets suit like so okay let's run this through right um he keeps going, writes a bunch of content. It just gets shared and shared. All of a sudden, it gets shared in all of the the forums with all the super geeks, and it starts making huge cash flow and it blows up. At some point, somebody from a studio is going to catch on and be like, "Who the who is this?" And mm. cease and desist letter shows up, and your business goes to freaking zero. And one of my personal rules in business is to make sure it can never go to zero, yeah. right? Same playing poker, same with, with trading or investing. You can never blow up your mm -hmm. entire, you know, you can't let your golden goose get its head cut off. Yeah. Um, that's, that's kind of where I'm at is because if you're going to spend, like, it takes a lot of time and energy to build uh, a site and it's just as easy to, to just come up with a, um, another brand name that plays off of the idea that like, you know, is like X wing or tie fight. Like, I don't know. Yeah, like, there's obviously some, there's I, something. I, mean, I don't know. There's yeah. Like, did they go trademark everything? And then, so for everybody wondering like USPTO, open that up in another tab for us real quick. USPTO trademark search. And then type in trademark search. And then go down below the ads. I thought you had ad blocker on. What's that about? <laughs> There you go. And then um, there should be, so search trademark database. Do you see the, well, okay, like, it's on like here. You're, so, you're talking to me, you're talking to me, this one? I'm on a different page than you somehow. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah, search T-E-S-S, -S, oh, that's dad. it, yep, for sure. Just click the goddamn button, dad, this one. There you go, yep. And then, so that link up top, yep, search it. So now we want to do a basic word mark search, mm -hmm. user, right? Type in Star Wars. Again, I'm not a lawyer. Like I'm not intellectual bingo, right? So like it is a live wow. active. So these are all these like like if you use any of these, they I mean, so corporations have filed to protect this. This is my asset. You are not allowed to use this asset. And if and when they find out that someone else is, eh, you're done. Uh, right. So for everybody building a brand, it's actually really smart to run your domain name through the trademark search. Again, I'm not a freaking lawyer, but like no. I, I've 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 gotten cease and desist letters. I had domains, I had sites that were built that I had to turn off mm. because I was building on the back of somebody else's brand name, and I was like, oh, I'm not allowed to do that. Like, okay, yeah, oops. Uh, I will say this, um, you know, from from a from an affiliate marketing standpoint, if we're worried about things going down to zero, one of the things that I mentioned was um, that that. If you can, if you can really build this site up, and you don't have any, and you know, and like you know, aside from any issues, imagine having an email list, right? Where a, a company, you know, you know, Kenner or some like company gets access to, like, because because what happens is Star Wars is um, a franchise that they're they sell the license to different uh, manufacturers of products. 
So Lego, right. for example, has uh, bought the license to make Star Wars stuff, right? Right. So uh, imagine, I mean, Lego is probably a bad idea, but like, look at this Death Star cheese set. Whatever makes this, whoever makes this cheese set bought the license from from Lucasfilm, from Disney to, to use, you know, the intellectual property to make this cheese board and to sell it, right? Yep. Imagine having a site where, and an email list, where somebody creates a new product you put it on your website and you click send on an email and that that sells out for that for that company right 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 you can then command a much better affiliate deal because you now have the power of hitting that send button right, right. when you have an email list it's like look i, I know this this product's going to be huge my audience is is frothing for it um you know i want 10% I want, you know, 15%, whatever the deal is that you work out, because as soon as I hit the send button, like your inventory is gone. I think that's a and huge this opportunity. Is where, totally. And I mean, you sometimes see that that affiliates and content creators actually get like co-branded deals. And yeah. like it's in big in the makeup space, actually. Like people are getting their like influencer getting their own makeup lines. And it's the same thing. They just put a different brand on top of the same thing. And it's right. like, yeah, it, it, there's huge potential. And like Star Wars, Star Trek, it's the same thing. It's they're they're just raving fans who want everything. Right. Uh, I think it's brilliant if this is like straight Pinterest to hear, like I, I love that kind of how quick and easy it is. I just want this to be built for the long term, and I can't like, yeah, like uh, uh, investing time and energy in something that could go to zero is is, is scary, risque, risque. Uh, okay, moving on. Moving on. What, what's next? Dave Stewart Junior. dot com. And I'm, I'm I don't think Dave's on watching right now, but um, so and we know who this is. Dave Stewart Jr. dot com, or is Correct. it spelled out Jr. Yes. Uh, so Dave, I ran D -A -V -E. this. I'm sorry. Oh can yeah. Can you uh, can you like spell that for me? Yeah. D a v e s t u a r t j. -R. Oh, he's one of those S T U stewards, not the S T E, -E stewards. Stewart. Sorry, correct. Dave. Um, Got it. Cool. I'm pulling up data. So looking at the page speed, uh, Dave is another one who has absolutely crushed it. So page Go. speed is not a concern Good. here. Um, you're Jump, checking Dave. on the. Uh, SEO. Meanwhile, I'll talk quickly about the design. Uh, one of the things that I noticed immediately is this uh, full width navigation. Uh, I would be, I would, I would bring this in to match the width of container width. Yeah, the container width. So if we look at this, yep, your container width is eleven twenty. So I would make this also eleven twenty. And I do think that there's too many uh, URLs up here. I'm sure, um, I'm sure a few of these could be mixed together. You know, maybe uh, about and newsletter. Um, you know, books and speaking could be mixed together. Blog could be something else, maybe. And then you have a search bar here. But you can see there's there's some padding issues over here compared to what's over here. Uh, or you might not be able to see that yep. in this screen, but. Uh, so what do you, so f other than that, like, I think Let's go it to the top is, real quick. yeah, yep. I want to jump on something with everybody. Cause this is super important for everybody. Um, so when you read that headline, cause that's, that's a headline. What, what, what does that mean to you? What's your interpretation of that? Uh, without reading the, um, I, I don't know what's the wrong headline. with teaching right now. Uh, yeah, like, and I just don't even know what it's about, right? So let's make teaching better. So like a headline is an opportunity to make a big promise. And so what do we want to promise? Like everyone is tuned into WIIFM. Okay, so every visitor when they load a page is tuned into WIIFM, like a old radio station. What's in it for me? I knew it was that's what the user's <laughs> thinking about, right? What's in it for right. me? Um, that's I think that's a Zig Ziglar quote is who I'm poaching. Who that is from. Zig Ziglar? Uh, is that a real person? Yeah, Zig Ziglar, he was an old, he, so he started out as a pots and, he was a door-to-door -door pots and pans salesman. Mm. And he sold, he literally sold door-to-door -door pots and pans, and then he became a sales trainer, and then he became kind of a sales trainer, motivational speaker guy. Ah. And it's his quote is the, um, you can get anything you want in this world if you help enough people get what they want from 
this world type thing. Yeah. Um, so anyways, so let's make a promise. What is our promise? It's what's in it for them. So who is finding this? Is it teachers? So if it's teachers, then are, is, are we, are we making learning more engaging for their students? Like we're not making a promise. And then Don, Dave goes on to talk about himself. Right. And we have, we always have three places we can shine the spotlight. Okay. There's always one option on stage. Either it's us on stage and we're talking about ourselves. It's our customer on stage and we're talking about our customer or it's our product on stage and we're talking about our product. And it works best in business when we keep it focused on our our customers because they are thinking what's in it for me. And when we meet them on the top of our page saying, here's the big promise you're going to get on this website and here's all the value you're going to get out of this website, they're reading it. What's in it for me? Oh my gosh, there's all this value on the website. I am in the right place is the natural feeling. And he's missing that opportunity mm. here to make a really big, unique promise about what's going to happen and then explaining the benefits that are going to be in it for them. You, you noticed it's kind of like it's kind of in there. Yeah. Like, right. Like, but but this is the promise and it's actually hidden at the bottom. And, and this is incredibly com incredibly common. Um, mm -hmm. I want to say that Dave has great numbers a 44 domain authority 18 mm. citation or trust flow 40 citation flow dave's a boss is is what's going on here really strong backlink profile when i search um site colon on google i'm seeing 2330 results i would make sure we're not indexing things that don't need to be indexed um does dave actually have 2300 posts if so good job dave but i would i would just make sure that yeah. that like that's insane. And and we just we want to make sure that we're not running things into our sitemap or that we're not indexing things that we don't need to because there, there is go. an idea of a crawl budget with Google. Mm -hmm. 700 plus articles. So like I would assume that your Oof. number of results showing up should be closer to 700 not 2300. Right. Um we're pretty geeky in the SEO. If your traffic's good and you're like, "Ah, I'm good." You don't have to go into that, but if you're like why do I not have as much traffic as I feel like I should? I would look into those kinds of things. Yeah. Um, don't burn up your crawl budget with Google on images and tag cloud pages. Right. Um, when right. you want Google to recrawl your blog posts and your pages. Yeah. I mean, you can do that with sitemaps, right? I mean, that's super easy to do. Sitemaps and robot.txt for sure yeah. is, is what you do. Yeah, you can disallow. Um, dis so now disallow. Yeah. Yep. Totally. So now um, when you're on the site, like let's go up to the to the top again. So Dave creates webinars for teachers and teams around the world. Or we cool. want to go webinars to webinars that do what? Yeah. So like like what one one thing that I got a coaching on, I, I hired this hotshot UI UX designer. And one of the things she asked me that I thought was really valuable was like, what is the goal of every single page? What is the goal of your website? And then what is the goal of every single page? And it should be really clear what the actual goal is and i don't necessarily feel like from here i understand what the the goal is what action does he want his people to take mm. and as you scroll around i don't necessarily see like like what do we want people well let's to look do? at i mean i guess it's these things uh, professional uh courses uh, in-person consultations with uh, workshops, uh, webinars, books, you know, he's got all the things. And if we look at right. like maybe the most recent post, um, which was written yesterday, it looks like, you know, getting subscribers. Right. Right. So if, if getting subscribers is the be all end all, because he's got webinars up top and he's got books up top also. Yeah. Right. And so on the homepage, there were three things that the user could do on the homepage. It was all three of those. And it's like, let's, engineer a journey uh, a path. and a yeah. pathway mm -hmm. for our absolute best people. So go look at who's your best customers, who's your high ticket people. Did they buy your low product stuff? Did they go through your webinars? Did they buy your books or did they come in through email and buy off the email? And let's try to create an actual flow so we have all paths and all roads point in one direction that takes people on the logical journey that we have a pretty good idea brings in your best clients and then let's just run everybody through that journey so it's not like wow it's a full buffet menu of things it's yeah. kind of like you start with an appetizer and then you get this and if it's email first then a book then a webinar then a phone call where you sell yeah, high ticket you, stuff you're, you have to create great. the funnel yeah engineer it yeah 100 mm -hmm. percent. 
Well, uh, real quick, Susan wants to know what are you using to you know do your searches behind the scenes there because we don't have your screen mm -hmm. up. Yeah, totally. I think I can share my screen possibly. No, no, I can't. Google Chrome only. Denied. Um, so KW Finder is the keyword tool that I personally use and recommend. Uh -huh. um, inside of keyword KW Finder, there's two tools. One's called a Site Profiler, and it's in the same uh, bundled um, subscription. And then they have one called Link Miner. Uh, if you want a free one, you can go. Moz has a free one. It's at open opensiteexplorer.org. We'll take it's a Moz tool, so you can go M O Z comma Open Site Explorer, and you'll learn your domain authority and your page authority. Do you want to open real quick? Just Google um, Open Site Explorer, comma Moz M O Z. Let's let's show the folks at home. Open um, site. Sorry, I can't. Explorer. Yep, comma M O Z Moz. Yep. And so you'll get like ten searches per month, uh, for free. And I recommend a figuring out what your domain authority and what your page authority is, and then when you look at your competitors, um, you can kind of like see where they are see where you are and yep this is it literally it's it's this one so you got to sign up for a free account and just yeah. plug in your your url you'll get your domain authority your page authority and then you can monitor some of your um competitors and and you can kind of look into your competitors backlinks and see where they're getting mentions and shout outs and you can go try to get the same ones mm -hmm. um and and then on google i just i just google site colon s-i-t-e colon and then the url yeah and it'll tell you how many um, results pages or posts or how many things are indexed and and that's one thing i use to see you know is, is google picking up on this right um so i mean other than that i think like i mean just to kind of recap this real quick from a page speed perspective crushing it from an seo perspective yep. probably crushing, crushing it, it. right uh, from a design perspective, totally. you know, I don't really have much to say about this because I do like the cleanliness of it. Um, and obviously yep. it's fast. I don't I don't have any I sort of it. like strong feelings one way or another besides could be 2020 theme. Could be what? It could be the 2020 theme, which I really like. Yeah. And, um, it, it's and, and I think I like it. cleaning up just the navigation. I mean, it's it's tight enough like you have things above the fold. Um, but I think the big one for 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 you and I and for me as well is. Uh, sort of cleaning up the copy and and honing in on exactly what it is that you offer and where you want your customers or visitors to go. Like, what is the what is the number one priority that you need people to do? Right? What's the one thing you yep. want them to do, and then kind of like build that journey for them and engine. You said engineer that that pathway, which I think hundred percent. And you can use call out. So like, let's make teaching better. Like, are his clients teachers? Um, right. So, um, like literally like helping teachers to like, it's, it's literally like all these little kind of points of really connect with your perfect avatar, with your perfect person, with the copy, mm -hmm. and then help them kind of get onto the path and, and figure out like, I, so it's conversion optimization technically, like to, yeah. to group it all into one idea. I think he's at a point where he's a boss, like he's got great SEO. He seems like he's getting, um, links and when I say links, I mean press PR sure. from from actual industry stuff. Like like he's known, so it's like perfect at this point. People are finding him; they're showing up. Where what do we want to do? What's the process and and engineer that flow? And I mean, mm -hmm. there is just a huge business potential here. I think personal brands are just the place to be. Hi, Dave. Dave's watching. He said hey, it was Dave. He said it was Welcome super helpful. So, um, cool. cool. Yeah, and obviously, uh, if you have any questions, you can you know. Money Lab Pro, you know where to go. It's all there. Um, so moving on, allergyfoods.com, and that's spelled uh, uh, allergy, right? Or it's not allegri. Uh, P-H-O-O-D-S.com. Oh, interesting. Um, what's, what's weird here, just kind of right off the bat from a design perspective, I don't see the... I don't see the the logo that spelling name up top. Yep. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't, um, but I know it's, uh, yeah, I believe, let me just look here. Um, so alert, uh, I don't even want to say it. Go yeah, by the dot com is what Tracy I'm is, I'm uh, Tracy B Nutra mom. That's her Twitter handle. I would, I would go get your correct spelling domain name. Oh, 
like I would I would go buy it. I would just do it. And and it's weird to even say that live. So I hope she gets it. You mean um grabs it. because you mean from a uh like you mean just spend the money if it exists? Yes. It does. And it's for sale. Okay. Um and I, I would buy it. Because because like so so she's building brand, right? What is so say the brand name, which you just did twice. Mm-hmm. And I went to the wrong URL twice. Mm-hmm. And so it it hinders the recommendability of this URL. Yeah. And if someone if her competition swooped swooped um now at this point in time she's probably attracting her own um domain authority 27 page authority 31 dude good good seo numbers again like i like that your your students have good seo so so in many senses traffic's coming from google into a blog post right so nobody needs the the misspelling doesn't matter in that sense but i think to go from a six figure or multiple six figure brand to a seven figure brand that's where it, it, it becomes something that like the skinny confidential that people talk about and share about um and i would make it i would consider making it more share shareable um, yeah i think i'm having a hard time finding out where the blog part is oh is it well, so is it is so the blog is separate it's a blog spot account apparently yeah. Okay. Um, I, I mean, from a design perspective, I have like a million things we could talk about, but from an SEO perspective, is this you, said you to even look at, huh? Is, is it hurt for you to look at? Does a little it, bit. Is it painful? <laughs> yeah. I yeah. mean, uh, there's a lot going on. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and from a page speed perspective, kind of right off the bat, if we go and look at it, um, it's not the worst performing one that we've seen. But it is, it's, you know, could certainly use some help. And mainly, um, mainly it's the, uh, the actual hosting company, the hosting company, I think could, could really, uh, be improved. And because the rest of it is sort of TGMB. like, just it's, it's CSS. It's pretty minimalistic. Um, but then you also have a lot of JS stuff for mobile and, um, a lot of theme, extra theme stuff. You can see all these, like, uh, I could probably tell just from looking at the top here, like you're, you're loading these images up here and those images are like, they're all separate and you don't need them. Like you, you just, right. I think at this day and age and I, and I, I, I am going to say this, uh, and I, I'll ask for some pushback, but I don't know if anybody's going to give it to me. You know, those share buttons that we all used to put on our websites on every single page. Uh-huh. Name me one person dead. who doesn't know how to They're share. Dead. You know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent. And and so I also look at it in the sense of so if you click click on Facebook, do you leave the website or does it load a auto share? Like, what does it actually? What's the functionality do? It does it take you to you a fan to, page? Yeah, yeah. So so like leaving the to like like you, you just I just left. You just gave Zuckerberg traffic. Yeah, like, that's not the goal. Of the, that's back to what I said on the last one. Like, what's the goal of this website? Is it to give Zuckerberg traffic? Yeah. No. And I would even Is argue it to give. Yep. And and it's not even a, a rel no follow, you know, so. Right. Right. And it's at the very, very, very top to get super geeky. So we have like yeah. a, a, a do follow link that, that doesn't open another tab. It literally. It, so so it's an escape point. Now, now I think of things in terms of funnels a lot. Right. Like I am a direct response marketer. Every page has one goal to take them to the next step. And then that page has a goal to take them to the next step type thing. So everything that fights that, meaning it's a leakage point, it's a place for people to fall off and disappear. Because once, so so user behavior, I click, I'm on Facebook now. Oh, what do I do when I'm on Facebook? I just look at random shit. I just yeah, scroll you, around and look at random shit. Yeah, exactly. They're gone. It's the, it is the most intricate and psychologically aggressive distraction mechanism ever built in the history of humanity yeah don't let your people go there period um and those who like you enough and use facebook they're going to look for you on facebook they'll yeah. search you out because that's what they do because yeah. they're facebook users now i loaded in and people saw me like with my head down like dude this guy's just like texting people <laughs> um i wasn't i loaded it on mobile and i think her site looks really good on mobile 
And what happens on mobile is the sidebar disappears, oh, that, right? Yeah. And the sidebar goes under and it declutters it. So I would encourage her from a design perspective to get more into a modern medium style, no sidebar style, real kind of a clean container logo navigation. Let's get some cool content. Let's make a promise and let's help people move forward on things. And I feel like it looks better on mobile than it did um, fully on, on you're, desktop. You're hundred percent right. I mean, we don't need this. I mean, it's actually too thin. Um, you can make it a little thicker. Uh, the, the actual container, the background don't need it. Uh, we don't need a separate background from the container. Uh, I just think this is most, I mean, there's two things that stand out to me. You said from an SEO perspective, if things look okay, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, this is, this has page speed issues, but it's also really kind of rooted in design. Uh, the design of this site could really, uh, be improved to be a very focused, you know, thing. Cause I don't, what I, what I don't understand right now is what am I supposed to do here? Is this a, is this yep. a blog? Is this a, uh, am I buying something? I know that she's a consultant. E I know that and she's got um, an ebook on there too. She's got an ebook on there. Like, yep. what do you want me to do? Yep, 100%. You know? And what I would recommend highly for her is um, opt-in is where you focus. And then after they opt-in, show a one-time offer for your ebook. And they see the ebook offer on the thank you page from opting in. This is yeah. building a basic, basic funnel. Because A, when they get on their your email list, you now have an infinite number of opportunities to attempt to sell them. But let's just, so let's get them in your ecosystem first. I'm also noticing when I just go search her URL in Google, allergyfoods.com, the title tag for the entire website is literally just Nutramom. Um, she so built that's... the site in 2012. So that's where all the, the SEO value is, is in the age she has, but going in and adding actual title tags and description tags and really kind of optimizing a, a lot of those components um, because most of her title tags are like Greensboro food allergy specialist. Green, it all says Greensboro food allergy specialist for all of the the pages that are, that are ranking. It's kind of keeps repeating that. Yeah. And um I, so, I would I would go so like articles I would say um, you know give it a title like like food allergy articles it'll help you boom desire is it, is it pulling up her uh, her blog articles that's on a no different website? I would need to probably do yeah I would need to do that that is blogspot dot or allergyfoods allergyfoods dot blogspot dot com so not even her own domain so right off the bat I mean I know this site's built on WordPress it's at the bottom here. Um, right. Powered by WordPress, although, and it's WordPress.org. So that means that this is a, she has her own hosting company, all that. I would take all of those blog spot posts, copy and paste them, put them into WordPress on this site and host them yourself and forget blog spot. I mean, yep. right. That's and then and then 582 results on Blogspot, 180 results on her domain name. Yeah, she could um, combine this all together, and I think would serve. Exactly. I mean, it would just immediately make that allergyfoods.com uh, so much more authoritative in that way. Yep. And put it in a, a nice, new, neat carbonate theme. Um, yep. Hire somebody off of Fiverr or Upwork to do it for you. Somebody in the Philippines or um, Eastern Europe, and you can get somebody for a very low price to just just get all of this going and just make sure they know what a 301 redirect is and make sure they know how to kind of keep the SEO up. But it's it's kind of right. just a pain in the neck. It's not a difficult task, but it's not something I think she should take on herself. Right. Um, I would absolutely outsource it. If she's like, I don't have money for it, run a five day sale on your ebook, sell it to your email list and go make the money you need to get it done and, and get mm. it done. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering how, how good her email list is. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm just assuming it's good. I don't know why. I just feel like it is. And it's I also think since 2012. Yeah. You know, I also think, uh, you know, I'm a little confused because Nutramom is a, re well, according to this image right here, it's a registered trademark. And you, that's, that doesn't, that's not easy to get, you know? Uh, and if that's true, that is what the fucking website should be. <laughs> not to, not to, sorry for the F word, but I just, I get really passionate about trademarks and about branding. Well, even say it out loud. Say it out loud. Nutramom. Dot com. 
Nutramom.com. Oh, it even like rhymes. It, it rolls off the tongue, and and you know how to spell it when you hear it. it. Yeah, even if you can't if you can't get the .com for whatever reason, uh, I mean, you own the registered trademark. I I do know like, um, there is some like levers and some strong arming that you can do when you own the trademark to get the domain. Totally. It's it's difficult, um, but you can pay for that kind of service to get that. But I, I mean, you can go with a dot. You have co. a lawyer write a cease and desist letter and you send over the cease and desist letter and you, you take it back. Like yeah. literally or, or it's the like, opposite of what we talked about on the other one. Yeah. Or there's like the, you just add the word the to the beginning. And then, you know, later when the yeah. money starts to roll in, you can, you can buy it. I mean, I'm still trying to buy moneylab.com, you know? Oh, okay. I don't have the trademark on it. I tried, didn't, I didn't go through, but um, anyway, yeah, th- I think that this site could, I mean, this is one of those things where you could hire one person who understands what all of the technical stuff that we're talking about and like o- almost like that have like an instant explosion of of traffic and and like income. Yep. Because I feel like all the pieces are there. It's just that they just need to be like, you know, corralled a bit into one area and cleaned up and made faster and it's like and from a just from a technical side of things, I think this this could blow up in a good way. Totally. So uh, I know a bit about allergies. I have family members who have allergies. The number of children coming in with allergies today compared to 10, 20, 30 years ago, the, the rate of allergens going up drastically. Um, Dr. Zach Bush says it's tied to glyphosate, which is Roundup. Really interesting stuff. Shout out yeah. to Dr. Zach Bush because his podcast, what he's doing is incredible. Um, but so it's like it's a huge problem for parents. It's something that requires a massive amount of learning. So you have a child. Your child is now allergic to walnuts. Holy F. Like, yeah. what do you do? You're spending time on Google. You're searching. You're looking for helpful advisors. You're looking for content. You're looking for help. So huge potential here, but it needs to be focused in on one site, one URL, one domain, and then one strategic flow for most people uh, that leads all the way to – because I'm assuming – I know she does consulting because that was in her title tag. Can't really see that. So it's like let's let's now – People are finding you. People are showing up. Great. Let's get them on your list. Let's show them your ebook. People who buy the ebook, let's make sure they know about your consulting services afterwards. Yeah. That right there may actually be enough to 2x, 3x, 4x your income, um, focusing everybody, all of your attention, everybody's path onto a, a really similar little little pathway. And and John just made a good point. This is YMYL, right? We are close. Uh, we are close. But the one of the, the things, and so for everybody who's listening who doesn't know why MYL means your money or your life, it's also been called the medic update. Um, but she may actually have the EAT. So like right. YMYL is like, who cares? Like it just is what it is, right? So like if she's already ranking and she's been ranking and she's actually doing well, great, cool. Like that's that ain't going to change. Um, so if she's got a traffic issue up until now, that would be a very different conversation. But mm-hmm. but I'm kind of operating under, under the assumption that she has a good relationship with Google within her space. Yeah, and and uh, Jack just asked, "Am I recommending a total rebuild of the site?" And and uh, not from obviously it's on WordPress, so it's not like you're rebuilding the back end of the site. It's and like again, a consolidation. Yeah, it's more of a consolidation and a new theme. It's like if you just yeah. add a new theme to this, I guarantee you things would just like kind of slowly start to fall into place but yes get rid of those giant images in the background throw a white background in the background single column like it's gonna that that would speed up a ton those are huge images and yeah but yeah just i I would just get it running like even if you go on 2020 theme or carbonate theme um just simple clean uh loads fast but all in one place to where it, it i mean she's got different people finding different things on different URLs and the lead flow is going to be different and the opt-ins mm-hmm. are going to be different and the thank you page they see after the opt-in is going to be different. And the, yeah, you can do a pop-up on a WordPress site, but you can't do a pop-up on a blog, you know? So it's like, right. Yeah. And I, and I picked this site because of how drastically different it ha- is. It was designed to the rest of the six that we or the rest of the five that we chose that we chose because yep. this one is it's it feels very 1990s uh vibe and i think um you know obviously it looks good on mobile which is great but yes i think um you know you know jack's asking about the 
like how much of a redesign, you know, is this new navigation? Yeah, it's everything. You know, it's it's we'll go load zenhabits.com real quick. Um, so I think we've talked about him before. So he gets he's got two million plus readers. Um, and it's like I it like designed me like minimalist works right. so well. Like this website gets so much traffic. Like yeah. literally, they he just got rid of everything. Right. So and if you think about the the new parent who has a child who has allergies and now they're like having their O F moment, all they care about is the content. So let's yeah. get everything out of the way and get them into the content so they can start to see the value. And on this, you could put a little opt in box. It's just a nice little neat tidy box to give away your free PDF or whatever it is inside of here. And it just so it's like in with me with design, like simple, 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 simple yeah. is absolutely key. And I would rather have people overboard to something that's this brutally simple up first and then test adding things on. And most I, people I like to put glitters and glue some sequins on it and be dazzle it and be jewel it and do all that. And then you're like, well, I have a terrible user experience. My on page, my bounce rate is super high. Why? It's because all the shit that's on it. Yeah. Bring it down to nothing and then test like, okay, what if I put an opt in on here? How did, oh, let me take that opt in off. Okay, cool. That was a exactly. good or a bad thing for the user experience. You, you have a, a foundation that you can test on. Yeah, start um, all the way down my opt-in pages. Work your way are, up. Yeah, even my opt-in pages are brutally simple right now. Like, um, simple works, man. Like, just just the, the simpler we make it, the the easier it is. Because human beings are searching for answers on Google, and they find your title tag and your description tag, and they're like, "Ooh, I'm going to give this person a chance." They click the button. We have about four seconds to either help them understand what's in it for them. Mm -hmm. Or they're going to leave. And the simpler it is, the the faster and easier it is to, to get into that kind of content. Yeah. The other thing I want to mention, too, and I just noticed this, uh, no hamburger on the mobile. Oh, oh, interesting. Stop with the hamburgers. <laughs> I have a hamburger. Do you? My hamburger is really it. nice. Yeah. No. Okay. Test Never. it. <laughs> Test it. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Um, because when they click my hamburger on mobile, it, it it does a full screen lock and it's got my opt in. It's got a button for my opt in oh, on it. And it actually yeah. it actually works really, really nifty. It's it's something we're testing on on the other side. To, yeah. Yeah, I'd be curious to see, you know, that versus not that. No hamburger. No hamburger. Um all right, I'm moving on to surges dot co. S E R S U R G S U R G E S surges.co okay. and this was sent in to us by Stu at Stu Goulden um on twitter it's a if you want to what's uh, up follow. Stu? yes s s t u g o u l d e n um this site is just from a design perspective is amazing it's great i have nothing to say uh I'm this not, oh, this was confusing the logo yeah, I like. I'm like, huh? what's going on here? I must tilt my head to see. It's this. cool. I don't understand the. I don't understand why it's tilted. Is there a story to that? Because that would be cool, um, but probably not. It's probably just a design ch choice and not based in any sort of like um, reasoning. Which so let's run this. Let's run my little test real quick. What is this site about? One hundred percent honest marketing tool reviews. Hey Matt, what's in it for you? What W I I F M? What's in it for you? Uh, just from that sentence alone, uh, I'm 100% honest marketing tool reviews, right? I, I guess I'll know which marketing tools to use based on. That's it. And, and so what I'm pointing out here is the clarity of it, right? The messaging is clear. I know what I'm going to get here. If I'm not interested in marketing tools at all, I, I know that I'm in the wrong place and I'm going to leave. If I'm interested in marketing tools, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Like, like I'm in the right place. Um, yeah. This kind of clarity at the beginning, we're not using uh, kind of analogies. We're not talking about, like, we don't even know who the person is, right? It's not this, it, they're not pointing the spotlight at themselves. They're literally like, you are going to get, boom right here and and straight into it like literally here's the best of the best they actually deliver on that promise you scroll a little bit to this leaderboard thing like they're delivering on the promise immediately like here's the best here's our leaderboard holy cow like so from from that standpoint of delivering on the promise and giving users what the right users are looking for a plus like it's rare to see sites that have it together this good on that side of things in my personal opinion very good example yeah i mean well done Stu. 
Yeah. The only thing I could say about this site is it is slow. Yeah, I think it's our slowest site. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it looks like it's slow. Let's see. From a water, you know, I think if you put this site on uh, Cloudflare, you'd have, uh, you'd just, you'd, you'd bump it up tremendously. And it could be, um, yeah, it could be just that I, I could load it again and maybe do a retest and see what happens. Uh, but yeah, it looks like it's a hosting issue and not necessarily a design issue. Um, so, uh, on, you said on your site, you have a hamburger. Yeah. On miles Beckler. Yeah. On mobile. Um, so real quick hosting provider is cloud cloudflare on that, by the way, oh, it is cloud. So you have cloudflare built in. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's probably cloudflare is probably just running the front end. There's probably somebody else on the, um, hosting. Um, yeah. Um, so real quick, Hey dad, okay. when, when you, um, when you go into mobile, what happens is you get this little three stacked button here. And when you That's click that, hamburger. it has the full image. When you see that on a website on your yeah. phone, that little thing is yeah. called a hamburger because of the way it looks, the three stacked. And oh, I can, oh, oh, oh. I figured, you know, we got, oh, I can't zoom in. Interesting. Um, Oh, there it is. That's the hamburger. Thought I wanted to make that clear for dad. Um, so yeah, it looks like is it's a server washers? issue. Oh. So Yep. Gotta uh, fix the yeah. server issue. Figure out what's going on on that. Uh yeah. Design wise, great. Speed wise, not so great. Uh SEO wise, what are you looking at? So 138 posts are uh, indexed currently, um, only a 10 on the domain authority. Page authority homepage is like 21, and only an 8 on the citation, uh, trust flow. So, so the numbers aren't super strong on this. Um, so you're going to have to figure out a way to really start to get um, next level things. And I'm seeing a lot of the referring domains are coming from like my best coupon codes and get coupon codes and coupon marathons. Um, and all coupons.com that's yeah, coupon sites are horrible. Uh, they yeah. are, they are, a, a cesspool. They are a bane of existence for, for Google and Google has been trying to figure out how to like, you know, I mean, there's just so much fake spun out coupon stuff. So I would, I would, uh, not move forward with a coupon based backlink strategy if that's what's going on. But the thing is, coupon sites can scrape your site and see if you say, here's a promo code, like they might just scrape you without your asking, which is annoying, but possible. Yeah. Um, and then figure out, so, so how do you get attention to this from a press level? Like, I wonder if like, like, are we doing a podcast? Like, are we doing vi like, what, what is the thing that we're doing to, to really kind of um, go beyond just tool reviews to like, how to use it like yeah yeah because so a person who's wanting a tool review like yeah i want a tool review because i want a new tool to help me do this thing but ultimately I'm trying to build a business here um there's a lot yeah. of potential in, in that yeah um i actually think um you, do you think it's like over designed this, right? for me yeah for sure uh yeah. but it's but it's pretty um, and I just, I just like, I'm, I go simple every single time. I think these hard color blocks block the eye. They block the reader from going through. Mm -hmm. I feel like the, the little highlight thing, like I, I just, none of that. Like I, I want it to be super, super simple, but here's, here's the thing, right? So everyone's doing this business model. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So software as a service, like, oh, I could be a ClickFunnels affiliate and ClickFunnels boy will pay me spammy commissions if I sell spammy tools that are glitchy. Great. I'm going to go write a bunch of reviews about all of the ClickFunnels or the whole wealthy affiliate baloney. It's the worst, most disgusting cesspool of affiliate marketers. And they're all t writing tool scam. They, they Everything's a scam, right? It's a ClickFunnels scam and they rank for that. And then it's a lead pages scam. And if you want to know the one true thing, it's it's wealthy affiliate. And it's like, no, it's not. You guys are just, everybody's being stupid. So like, mm. what is unique? What are we doing? How are we going beyond? So like, look at me, I'm an affiliate, right? I'm in this space. I make a very good amount of money um, promoting the same things, types of things, uh, same product categories that they're talking about here. Yeah. Why is it I'm, I'm making 
multiple, multiple, multiple six figures per month doing this. Um, it's because I'm actually showing people how to use the freaking things. And I, I, and like I think literally, that's, yeah, I think you just kind of nailed it for me. It's like, um, you know, the, even the over design, it's like, it's, it's when you over design something, you kind of templatize it. Right. And now that it's templatized, you're kind of forced to fill in the bubbles, which I, which I'm not against, but it sort of makes the content weak because now you're like, you're trying to shoehorn, you know, this, this complex tool is like, we're just looking at convert kit right now. And all this is really yep. doing for me is selling me convert kit. You know, it's a, it's right. a, it's not, but it's not one. I don't know if it's, you know, if you look at the, the verdict and why this is really the, the big reason, right? I want this, you know, why did you give it 90%? As opposed, you know, and and what are we comparing that ninety percent to? Are we comparing that to Active Campaign? Are we comparing it to other email service providers like ConvertKit? Are you know, is this true? Like, I I don't know if there's any sort of like. Are we just saying what we need to say to try to get a commission? Yeah, because I think somebody's looking for ConvertKit. So if they click on me just before they sign up, I'm going to make a commission. Therefore, I'm going to go find every autoresponder possible and make autoresponder review, autoresponder review, yeah. Aweber review, Mailchimp review active campaign review and i'm just like each one gets a good grade i mean that can you do me a quick favor right which is what everyone is doing which means noise just a part of the noise and where's the signal is our boy res on like it's the the signal (laughs) is in someone taking time to build 150 videos to show you how to do everything on that system, how to build right. a funnel on ConvertKit, how to sell your products on ConvertKit, how to segment your audience on ConvertKit, how to tag buyers on ConvertKit. You build out this huge body, and that's to me, that's the really difficult work that no one is doing. Go to Google real quick, if you wouldn't mind, right here, and let's go literally search for ConvertKit review. Let's go look at a who's the competition, and is is are we is it just literally is everything the same thing? Because this is what affiliate marketers don't like. It's like yeah everything's become a method and it's all the same and everybody's doing the same thing. So like, okay, what's the top one there? You went past it. Can't Convert kit review. The, is it, it is. really Scale worth math. the money? Okay. So click op- control, click open that. Um, so it's, do their features justify the price? Like, are they all ending up by saying like, yeah, it's worth it. And click on my affiliate link, buddy. Like they, they're all sneaking in an affiliate link at the very top. They're all pulling the same exact information I can go get from their freaking pricing page. Yeah. Like what is like, so if we took the top five from this Google result right now, and this dudes we're looking at right now, could we interchange them all and literally no one be the wiser? Yeah. Probably. And that's my, that's my, that's my idea is that we literally like they're all like we could interchange them all no one would be the wiser they're all doing the same thing they're all probably trying to outsource content from a three cents per word person and uh, affiliate marketing and it's like are we really helping our audience here are we really and then so again so what's the alternative like i've got 750 videos that teach you everything for free because people don't actually want convert kit right this is the big point what do the people want they want to grow the most important and valuable asset within their business, which is their email list. That's what they want. And they're like, which email list provider can I trust? Da, da, da. They're on a greater journey. And this is hoping to get one click at one step to get one commission on that journey. And I'm saying step up to really be there for your people mm. and meet them wherever the hell they are. Go, Let's go earlier in the process and let's show them how to do everything to where when they find you, they're like, oh my gosh, yeah, I, finally, right, I found I somebody finally. who's going to show me all the pieces. Finally, I found Swim University and now I know how to make my pool not green anymore because he just showed me, I don't want the chlorine. Yeah. I want the clear fucking pool right you want the end result not the yeah exactly you don't want convert want kit convert you want kit. you want you want more sales you want to build an email list you want it because you want sales like what's you know automated sales this is honestly like why i think you know this is why i, I go back to money lab and i think about like the whole branding around money lab and it was it was what like we were going to call it product lab we were going to call it all these things and it's like what are we trying to do at the end of the day we're trying to make money. money. That's what the whole fucking point of a business is. So, like, yep. why why call anything other than just what it is? You know, everyone's got a, clear, a lab now, direct, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, everyone's everyone's yep. a lab, and I was just like, no, it's just let's just cut right to the chase. And what what I think is yep. interesting is why is it 
why is bloggers crossed out and it says coders instead? That's really weird. But like, how am I different? Right? Like, oh, yeah, maybe convert kits for creators. Nathan Barry keeps saying creators. So like how like and this is what I'm trying to say is we're using semantics to differentiate between what's mm. what's ranking on there. Right. Like it's all it's all semantics yeah. is what what's what. And they're all like literally if you were to go look at how many words are the exact same on all of these. Like I'm not saying like copyscape would show up, but like no one's OK. So these people sure. are doing some attempted a review thing they're trying to do something well this different. is capterra like this is what they this is the whole point of the company they have money and they're spending it right right but it's like it, it's literally like and and people are gonna be like well miles but people are searching for um convert kit review they actually want a review of it right but we need to do things in a way that are unique that are forward thinking and that ultimately yeah they want to review but they want confidence that they're going to get the right tool and then they want help on putting it all together and yeah. i would much rather meet people with the educational um keyword phrases um yeah and, yeah you're, and, I mean, you're said, like, like like you're right i mean you're going. right at the end of the day like it's not what this it's not what this site is built for right but but i agree that like in a sense if I, I don't care what software is out there. I want to know, I look, I want to build an email list. That's what I want. Right. So maybe I should rank for that and then go, right. Oh, we, you know, I've been using kind of convert kit and I actually kind of like it. I've used MailChimp. I've used Aweber. I've used active campaign. And out of the four, this is my favorite. I think with this site, you're not seeing that you're not seeing the comparison side of things you you and if you're not like us who understand that this is an affiliate marketing play and and only that we can see through the 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 bs right because we're in this space most people are not going to be able to see through that they're not going to see that this site is i'm not saying it's disingenuous because i i don't think it is but i think they're not going to see that like oh the only reason that this is maybe higher on the list is because they pay out higher. And that's the only right. reason why everyone in our space uses ConvertKit because that's, it's just, they just, they pay, they absolutely pay. Right. It was when, and they're not the first, Aweber was the first to do that. And everyone and their mothers was using Aweber. That's why everybody recommends ClickFunnels. It's not because it's a great tool. It's still glitchy as fuck. Like, yeah, they, well, they're all they every, every tool is glitchy in some way, right? It's like lead and pages it, is lead pages is stable. I gotta say, for something that has a shopping cart and landing pages, like I have to actually say, and they that, bought like, drip, lead pages right? Is That's the same company, super stable. I don't know. Okay. Um, but like, like comparatively, but it's, it's just, that's why everybody promotes a wealthy affiliate. Like, like it's because mm -hmm. that's, it's called they me pay to marketing. It's like MLM. It's like I bought in and so I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. So if I can convince other people to drink the Kool-Aid, I can make money. If I got 30% commission, I convince three people to drink the Kool-Aid. I'm break even and they'll buy me a car if I bring them a hundred yeah. people type thing. It's so now here's, here's the thing, right? So for, for. Great affiliate marketers are going to think like, okay, so convert kit review gets search. Okay. Yes. I get it. I know it does. We have data on this, but how many people are searching for how to build an email list, how to do marketing automation, how to like, what are all of the how to's that are one or two steps before which autoresponder do I choose? Okay. And when you meet someone before this moment, and you actually help them understand how to accomplish what they seek to accomplish in their lives and in their business. When you say that, by the way, convert kit is the best one for you click here to get started. And now I'm going to show you exactly how to set everything up that we just talked about. Right. It sells itself versus being yet another just review yeah. site. Um, one, of, one of, from a design perspective, I think like uh, one of the things I noticed is why, why are these here? You're, you're, as soon as people land on your page, you're taking them away from your page. You don't need these here. They can be either deleted off the site or at the bottom. Um, and I would have some reason for the, I don't, I really wish there was a story behind why this is tilted. Like, I really yeah. wished it was more like the, I like the branding. I like the word, but give me a sort of an icon or indication of like what it is that you do with just the icon with just like, you know what I mean? Um, so if you're a review site, if you're a ranking site, whatever, you know, maybe, maybe kind of go towards that direction. And other than that, like, I think this can be an incredibly great site. This could be, uh, 
the you know cat terror level like site if you're doing straight up legitimately honest battle testing reviews and i right the reason i don't do reviews on on some university even though everyone's told me to do it is because you know, right now I don't own a swimming pool. I'm not going to get a robotic cleaner sent to me and I'm not going to put it through the ringer, you know, beat it against a wall, making sure that it, it continues to deliver because if I can't do that, then, huh? Don't you have a pond in your backyard though? I do. I have to, yeah, I do. But, but like, I, but the reason like <laughs> I recommend the cleaners that I recommend is because I've used them, you know, and right. I've had enough customers. I've used them in my day and I trust the right. manufacturer and there's enough data that I can get from other customers who are using these things to make my educated assumption on how well this cleaner performs and based on my length in the industry and, and what I've done there. So, so, so let's ask another question. And like, like, I don't, I don't want to feel like we're talking smack about this person's website. Like they're no, taking no, no, action. I don't they're either. Something, this is brilliant, but I think this is a valuable conversation because our, our game of affiliate marketing is getting hijacked by people who think it's a method. So like, have you built a multiple six figure per year business? Have you made a million dollars online over the course of five years, which is only 200 grand a year for five years? Like, have you built a real business with these marketing tools? Like people have, have you like, right. And but then, has this person, has this person, like you're, you're showing me what to do. Have you actually not just read the websites and read the, and you're yeah. just reviewing the, the pricing tables mm -hmm. and we're putting a pricing table compare in there. Like, have you actually built an email list of a hundred thousand subscribers? I have, that's yeah. why I'm teaching what I'm teaching. If not like build a niche business around it. Um, or also, one least, other tip on this one, yeah, or at oh, least hire ahead. people like you who have done this and right. can and can give you feedback on your review. Or you don't have to do it. I mean, I look, you don't actually have to go out and review. You don't have to play with this software. You could just be the curator of everyone else's opinions about it, and you could create your own ranking system based on all of that, which actually. Yeah is also useful, right? It's like, imagine taking all of the, the reviews from like an Amazon, you know, from an Amazon product and just reading it all and figuring out a way to dissect that and, and cultivate it into something that is incredibly readable. You know, that's not just a right. bunch of like assholes, like fuck this product, I hate this shit. You know, like, it's like, okay, all right, screw those people. But like this three-star review has like some good information and I've seen this repeated 17 times. Like yeah. we need to, write a paragraph about that and put that in there, you know, so I think there is ways to do reviews without actually reviewing it. Um, as long as you're willing to do the work and that's the part that you systematize. That's the part that you templatize, you templatize behind the scenes so that when you do create a review, you can, and I think the best people that do this is wire cutter, wire cutter, you know, they, they are battle testing the products, but at the same time they have like these, this criteria of like, we went on to Amazon and we read all the reviews and we did this, you know, we went on to right. this site and we do like, this is our process for how we review, which lends credibility to the review. And then you right. can recommend things like convert kit and other things that do pay out high, as long as you truly do give it an honest review. But you Modern know what? If you're, is another site yeah, that's good at that too. Yeah. Anyway, so one other thing on this, I think that that um, you can offer bonuses. Okay, so again, how are you standing out? They're not. Uh, so like on the on every single email marketing review. So I'm assuming, and if you want to look for it, why why we go through this? So I'm assuming they have an Aweber review. I'm assuming they have a Mailchimp review. I'm assuming we've gone through all of them, right? It's like it's it's organized. So then it's like okay, so. By the way, a bonus, if you order through my link, I will give you my free course on how to make a million dollars with email marketing because I'm not just a guy who's reading sales pages and going, I've actually, I've built businesses using email marketing, which is why I'm reviewing this to you today. And if you buy through my links, I'll give you my full three hour video course on, on the seven things you need to have for email marketing success when you buy through my links. Now you're different. Now you're unique. You're leveraging your story. You're leveraging your next level thing to give more value to now incentivize people to to buy through your links. So there's drip, there's send grid, there's yeah. yeah. So they've yeah. gone through I mean, all of them. The work's been so, done. So control click and open a few of those if you wouldn't mind. Go up to um never heard of this. 
Never yeah. heard of this. Never heard of this. I was I'm thinking assuming kind of like the majors. Are these email marketing companies? Oh, uh, I just I think I just opened them too. <laughs> Not the uh... so. Oh. Uh. Oh, so not all Go of them have to... reviews. Got it. So we're just literally curating a list of of solutions. Affiliate. So that's probably what they're what they're building out to over time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that's I think everyone needs to think more about this. Like, so authority well, hacker. Their company uh, Woodpecker. <laughs> this cracks me up. That is something else. That's like um, naming your company uh, Year of the Cock. That's a callback. Callback. Yes. That is that was a bookend for for those of you who've been with us since the <laughs> beginning of this. Um, we've we've established that we're in the year of the metal ox. Yes. Um, but like so so you know it's so easy to build a review site. I could go spin I could go spin up a variation of this in an afternoon. I could go hire writers on Writer Access. I could have yeah. fifty thousand words of content doing this exact same thing. Pub fifty thousand words. I could have it all done and published by the end of the month, right? So like. Like, how does this stand out? How, how are we? And this is this is the big challenge because we are all kind of clogging up the search engines with search engine spam these days. And like, how do we stand out and how do we how do we um, really make something that's unique? And this is where personal story and brand and, and battle testing things and, uh, yeah. you know, throwing uh, pool sweeps into ponds and seeing how they do. <laughs> like, it's, yeah. it's those kinds of things. And I think, um, you know, are you familiar with Modern Castle? Do you know who have you seen that site? No. So he's really good. Uh, young young couple out of uh, Phoenix, and they buy the best vacuum cleaners, and they just they have a room in their house where they spill stuff on hardwood floors, and they spill stuff on carpet, and they actually literally like how good does this vacuum do? Really like, picking up things that we spilled. Yeah, like they just and then they sell it. And there's another one I think it's like Outdoor Gear Lab, and so Outdoor Gear Lab has a um, lab. like an eBay store where they sell all of the stuff that they bought to test. So they buy it, so they that's test awesome it, they run it through paces. Yeah, that they're buying the things also. That's, totally. a, that's huge credibility. And then they factor. resell it. And you, you can see the credibility of it. By the way, you want to buy all the stuff that we reviewed. It's all over here. And it's like it just builds a story of like, okay, this isn't somebody sitting at home who spun up a WordPress site, who found keywords, and who paid two cents per word for some random person to write whatever they wanted to write. Yeah. Hoping to get an affiliate. We have to really differentiate ourselves beyond that at this point for long-term success. Yeah. And I do think having some other, I mean, look, you can make money with affiliate marketing. It's, we, you know, we, we both do, I think. Right. That's what um, we do. So it, it's, yeah, you just, I think you and I are just, we want to see the internet do better. And I think that's where it really comes. You know what I mean? I think businesses do better when we're really, really useful and really, really helpful. And, and everyone's able to get to an average level of usefulness and helpfulness of like, you know, uh, like, so active campaign, versus convert kit right so that's a keyword phrase like yeah most people are just going to go literally do a two column layout oh this one has this this one has that this one's five dollars a month this one's 19 dollars a month here's a price comparison and it's kind of like but we can all do that on our own how do we actually make something that's unique deliverability tests on both uploading a thirty thousand person email there's yeah. there's ways to take it to that level yeah and but you but i think the only reason to do that is it is also to have something to sell Besides just like recommending products. Um, yep. So he here's the deal. We have one more site to do. Maybe we'll do Go a on. bonus site. I mean, we've already gone pretty long. We, I, I would right. like to do some Q&A. If you guys do have questions, obviously we talked a lot about a lot of different things. Get your questions in. Yeah, start asking questions now. And we'll, we'll, yep. we'll get to this next site. And then we'll, we'll, do, we'll go into Q&A. So, Say hello to my little friend. Scarface. Uh, <laughs> hello, music theory. Love the name. Um, Agreed. I, you know, so what do you, so again, again, let's, let's, let's look at everything. One, uh, we can look at while you're pulling up stuff for SEO. Uh, this site has some page load issues. Uh, if I look at the waterfall real quick, um, it looks like. Uh, yeah, we have some Google fonts again. Another Google fonts. We have uh, Mediavine. Mediavine. Uh, that's that's definitely slowing things down a bit. Um, but it looks like they're using WP Rocket, which is good. Uh, but yes, when you're when you when you're loading fonts, and you're uh, and maybe we're seeing um, we're seeing if we can see any sort of image or uh, video stuff. 
A lot of JS. There's just so much JS being loaded. A lot of it's from Mediavine, um, probably theme stuff as well, or plugin stuff. Uh, but yeah, I think you could get rid of a lot of the issues with just fonts. Look at how these fonts load individually, one at a time, and they're yeah. all kind of blocking yeah. it from from loading the entire site. So, uh, uh, that's an easy fix, and you know, but you're already halfway there. Um, as far as like the copy, right off the bat, do we? Does it answer our question? Do we? Does it? Is it? Is it? What's in it for us? Sort of vibes. No, it's telling me to say hello. Hello. Right. The subhead, which is the second line, is closer. Is is closer. I mean, right. So I've got when I loaded this, I've got a pop up now too. Uh -huh. And the pop-up says learning, it's like music theory resources, and it says learning or teaching music theory. Um, like, are are these students or teachers? Right. Wait, who, which who, one are we? Who are we talking to? Right. Yeah. They're very different. Like if you're teaching music theory and if you're learning music theory, oh my gosh, like there's not one e there should not be one ebook that works for both of those no. avatars for both of those people. Yeah. Right. So it's it's literally so so like um how to learn music theory in seven days. Okay. If I'm a music student and I'm actually trying to learn music theory and I'm, I'm frustrated at music theory and like, you're going to give me a seven day music theory crash course via email. Yep. I'm in right. It speaks to me and it's those kinds of things that I, I want to, to really get to. Um, yeah. I, mean, there's I, I think it's, I think it's brilliant niche i think the yes. the home music world is freaking brilliant i have a lot of students in that space and a lot of little sub verticals that are doing incredibly well and there's some big time marketers like scott's bass guitar i think oh you ever yeah heard of that guy yeah i know scott. he's yeah. good he is a smart marketer so there's what i'm getting there's people in the industry who who marketers can follow to see how they're building out facebook ads funnels opt-ins etc cetera, etc cetera. um I just want it to be a lot more clear. So, so why do I want to learn music theory? I don't think anyone wants to learn music theory. Oh, I I do. Really? Why? Yeah, for songwriting. So you don't want to learn music theory. You want to write songs. Write kick-ass songs. Yeah. Okay. So that that's it, right? And so on one of them it said, so you could pass your exam. What exam? Like what? What do we like? Yeah, I don't so know. It's, it's yeah, that, it's that. It's that level of clarity. Like, are we helping students? Is this a, is this literally like like um, on demand virtual tutoring for music students in high school? Mm -hmm. Okay. If so, there's a very specific group of needs. Is this for people like Matt who want to learn music theory because he mm -hmm. makes a unique new music video for every beer video he makes? Right. Right. If so, that's a totally different person. Yeah. I mean. It, it certainly looks like it's mainly for students who are learning, you know, maybe are currently in college or are uh, in high school. Maybe you're learning music theory in high school. I certainly had that. But although if you're in high school, you're probably not visiting a website and buying anything because you have no interest in doing that. Um, that's also uh, happens to be a really tough area to be in, like co like students, like college students, people who are actively in college, like you know, to have Broke. them go outside of their college experience to buy something, uh, it can be it can be tough. I only know that because I have friends who are in that space. Um, and college right. students, if you're talking about the younger side of college students and not people who go back or not people in their like master's degree or anything, um, it's even harder because they're they don't have the money to buy these things. Um so may I jump in with a couple of ideas here Please. that I've now done some research? Yes. So I saw somewhere on a page you were just on that said ABRSM exams. And I went to look what that is. Uh -huh. um, so it is the Associate, Associated Board of Royal Schools of Music. So I think we're in the British You're world. In the UK, yeah. An examination board for registered charity based in London that exam music centers. And I think it's younger demographics. So... If so, this could be great because when you're in first grade through twelfth grade kids, uh, um, the parents are paying for it, and you're you're yep. actually probably not selling this to the kids, right? And, right? and again, we have to know who our audience is. Who are we talking to? So, if this is a parent, like how to guarantee your child will pass the ABRSM exam in just seven days? Enter your email free. Seven day study guide to make sure your kid will pass the study mm. exam. 
if, if that's who it is, and this is the WIIFM, so the parent loads the page, it loads what's in it for me. Oh, they're going to guarantee my kid can pass this exam that my kid's not studying for and they're not doing their scales and I'm stressed out that my kid's not going to pass the exam. And if they don't pass the exam, then they're going to let down the the queen will be sad. Like, I don't know exactly what that is, but but yeah, that's the level of specificity. That's the importance of putting all those pieces together. Um, and then when, when the mom loads the page because their kids trying to have a snowball fight instead of doing their scales, mm -hmm. she's going to feel like, Oh, finally I'm in the right place. Finally, I found somebody who's going to help me take control of the situation that's been stressing me out for a while. And they're going to help make sure my kids are going to pass this exam. Cause it's really important to my family. Yeah. So from an SEO perspective on your side of things, all is good. Pretty good, man. So we have, um, 20 domain authority, authority, 33 page authority. It looks like it's going up. Cool. Um, really strong citation flow and trust flow, which are majestic numbers. Um, got some really solid backlinks back in December, from December 18th to about December 27th. I don't know what you did December 18th to December 27th, but I would go look at what you did because something happened on mm. your press. Uh, you maybe got press from somewhere. You got interviewed for a local something somewhere. It helped your site majorly. Mm. Go figure out what happened in that world of PR and do it again and again and again and again. Um, yeah, it looks really good, to be honest. Yeah. And I mean, this is this is everything right here. I mean, this should really be at the top. Um, yeah, I mean, I think there's obviously design wise, I like the logo. I don't I wouldn't change too much. Um, I, it looks clean. I think it could be obviously it could be faster. Uh, your SEO looks good. And really, it's mostly a copywriting issue at this point, right? It's mostly like yeah. trying to figure out who this website is for and then designing sort of what you said before, you know, sort of engineering that path for for, yep. for visitors to take no matter where they land on your website. Because, right. like, and I think as, as an example, I could say, you know, Swim University technically is a website that teaches people how to take care of their pools. And sometimes I get people in the industry, in the pool industry, who buy my course material to train their employees, right? Or to, or to, or because they want to start a small, you know, pickup truck business where they're cleaning pools and they, and sometimes they'll do that. Um, so I could essentially like hijack my copywriting and say like, you're a pool owner or you're a business owner, but that just completely like it, 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 it dilutes the message. Right. Yep. And so I kind of decided also to just be like, I'm, not, you know, if, if you, if the industry wants to buy it, cool, that's like bonus, but that's not who this is for. And I have yep. to just, I kind of just had to write them off, unfortunately, but, or start right. another website or start another section of my website that only talks to those people. And then they have a, their own specific product, but those people are not the majority of people who are visiting my website. And I would also Bingo. start to find that out too is perhaps you could start collecting email addresses. Maybe you, do, maybe you do have email addresses already. I didn't really see, I don't think I saw a spot to subscribe. Oh, down at the very, very bottom. Send out a, uh, um, on the homepage as yeah. well. Oh, on the homepage. So um, right. send out a, a, a pop-up. Ah, right. The pop-up. So send out a survey and figure out who these people are and then tailor it to tailor all of your copywriting around who that person, who the majority of those people are. And on your lead magnet delivery or the email that follows the lead magnet delivery, you can just say, hey, um, so I can better help you. Let me know, are you are you a parent with a kid or are you a teacher, right? Like right. what's the number one thing you're trying to learn about passing right. the ABSM or whatever exam? Um, just let me know. And I think you nailed it. So go back to the homepage real quick and scroll sure. to the top. The 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 body copy in the white. And and again, we, we've seen this multiple times. We saw this on Dan's website. So I'm going to lean way in awkwardly so I can see it on yours. So there's the line that says, um, to help you, your students, or your child. So we need to condense that. Study for and pass an ABRSM music theory exam. So that's actually what we're doing here. Like the point of the website is, is actually that. So we need to get this idea, this promise up to the top. So this could be like the UK's number one website for helping your child pass the ABRSM exam. 
like boom, if that's up top, we now know what's going on here. People who have kids and are working on that are going to be like, okay, I'm in the right place. Then they're going to read down below. And what, what can we do? We can make an offer. We can make a promise of like, I think a cheat sheet would be brilliant yeah. or a study guide. They're the same thing. You can split test the wording to see. Yeah. Cause like Brits sometimes are like, oh, cheat sheet. We're too good for a cheat sheet. Like, I don't know. Like, is it culturally like a cheat sheet? Like in America, we're like, yeah, cheat sheets. And in the UK, they might be like, oh, that sounds so crass or something. Like, I sure. don't know. But it's, it's a study guide, right? So it could be a seven day study guide. It could be a crash course study guide. Yeah. But, but give the study guide because, like, ultimately, that's kind of what they want. And then where are we going from this? On the page after, you can offer them the full book. What is your free giveaway for pool people in on Swim University? Because I feel like it's similar, even though there it's is so none. different. You don't have a free thing. It's just get my emails. Mm -hmm. So you don't have, like, a checklist? We used to. And we <laughs> You're we, just we, lazy. We used to have it. And we used to have different ones for each, like, kind of area of the site. And it yeah. – our got complex it got complex but then also like uh the amount of people that were signing up for just the checklist and then would never open any other emails again so we're just like yep. i don't you know it, it, to sort of like have to build all that and i mean we can we could add it back but it's just you know i haven't i haven't done an a b test but right. i just i hated the idea of having a different opt-in for every single like if you're in the oh, pool yeah. out you know if you're in the pool algae thing it's like you know, I needed one thing for all pool owners, and it's really – I had a yep. tough time figuring that out. Would love to talk to you about that because I, I did watch your email marketing thing. Uh, your One of your videos two days ago, um, yep. sat down and kind of just watched it and just was like – I had to shut it off because I started to, like, go down a rabbit hole. Like, I'm changing everything. <laughs> it's like yeah, – uh, The danger zone. The danger zone. So it, my, my goal Wait, is really so to get people to buy the product who land on the website, you know, and, and not – I'm not right. really kidding about you know. So there's, you know, um, Robert Cialdini in his book, Influence, talks about... Um, so dense. I hate that book. Yeah. It, 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 he talks about, like, um, micro-commitments. So uh -huh. uh, getting someone to click a button. So learn music theory right now. Like, it's we don't see the email address, but if you click that, the email address is going to pop up. So the click is a micro-commitment. That should have been a pop-up, in my personal opinion, right there, right? We should, we should have enter your name and email address should be exactly what it, it says right there. And then when they enter their email, that's another micro-commitment. And then when you display your actual book offer as a one-time offer, it's another micro-commitment to get them to click that button. And as humans take more micro-commitments, they're willingness to turn around and start over sunk cost comes in. Mm. And so this is why we structure these little tiny steps in that lead people to there. And what it is, is like, so in this case, what we're looking at the music theory, they would need to be able to come up with a seven day study course that works for everyone, which is quite difficult, but at its theory, there's like seven categories of ideas in this ABSM test that they'll be like, okay, you need to study this. You need to study this. You need to study this for you. It's like, you need to be able to test your pH. You need to be able to test. Like there's a few things you have to be able to test in order. And I don't care if it's a hot tub or a pool. There's a few, you have to be able to run a few certain tests on your hot tub or pool. And ultimately from there, you're going to be able to see like, am I in the range or am I not in the range? So I need like litmus tester things. I need like a little scooper doodad. I need to know how to shake it. How long did I just need to know how to do that one thing. And then if I keep my pH and my chlorine in certain levels, theoretically my pool and my hot tub should be good. Yeah. That's it. It's in there. So what's the promise around that? This is going to be super, uh, this is going to be enticing enough for people type, type thing. I'm not yeah. trying to get like too in the weeds, but talking about, cause I don't know anything about music theory. Right. So for me to be like, oh, scales, like it's, it's like the only word I know about, like learning uh, an instrument. Um, so uh, for YouTube, I just did a big uh, YouTube video yesterday mm -hmm. and it's like so I can do my my YouTube publishing checklist. And I just talk about the the 11 things that I do every time I publish a video. Right. Keyword right. research. Saw that. Yeah. Keyword in the title. Keyword. Right. It's all those little things. So I just make it into a checklist on what I do every time. And boom, now it becomes like. Um, but. I like having generic opt-ins that work for the whole website, which my people want to build businesses. Your people want to make sure that the hot tub or pool is ready when they're ready. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't want to, nobody wants to go out there with a bikini on and a towel around. They're like, Oh, 
it's a pond. It's a green pond. Like I'm not right. getting in that water. Like yeah. that, that's actually what you're, you're helping people avoid is, is avoid that. So, so what is it for the music theory site um, to pass that test? Right. And there should yeah. be a few things that need to be studied over and over to pass that test to get them kind of like, um, yep. I um, mean, I think we, that's, that's six sites we covered. Um, that's a lot. And maybe next time we'll do three questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Short? Uh, or, yeah. Or, or 10. Either way. Yep. Um, or 10. Yeah. Let's, let's take, there's some questions. Uh, cool. if you want to take some, how, how are you on time by the way? Yeah, I'm actually good. I haven't heard from the contractor yet. For uh, folks around, I'm trying to build out a um, uh, like a studio in in the room next by. I got like a rainbow on me from my. Uh, you see that thing? I like yeah. It. Uh, I got a prism in the window because someone's got watching over us. And rainbow. A leprechaun, perhaps. Um, yeah. So uh, no, I'm good. I haven't heard from the contractor yet. So I e easily got 10, 15 minutes if, if folks are with us. All right. So we're gonna jump over to Q and A, and I have to uh, quickly switch out. Look at. A song in between these. Da, 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 da. Um, there you go. Yeah, I, I I do have to build in some more things over time. I'm building. I'm also yeah, building oh, yeah. out a studio, so we're gonna have, like we're over time. There'll be jingles all the way. Um, Jingle so bells. Jack <laughs> Jack Kent says uh, I'm in the middle of the SEO course in Money Lab Pro. Matt shows a ton of posts he removed from some of you. Was that to improve link juice or something? Uh, no, that was to, it's cause they weren't getting traffic, um, because they were going out, they were, they were dumb articles. Like for example, and I bring this up constantly cause I think it's hilarious and also valuable. Um, I wrote a post called how to have sex in a hot tub and I ranked number one for hot tub sex for a couple of years over cosmopolitan.com <sighs> and in everyone who I was like in my little community at the time, this was a couple of years, many years ago. Um, they were like, you're just going to get the worst traffic, right? You're just going to get people who just want to see boobies and PBs and all that stuff. Uh, and so <laughs> I, 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 that's not what I got. I got number one and it was, it was, it was mostly about safe sex in a hot tub. And so I outranked okay. cosmopolitan.com, which was cool, except, um, who can have sex in a hot tub? Literally every single person on the planet. I mean, maybe not literally, because maybe some people can't have sex. But like, you ain't got to own one to have the. You don't the, have to own one to bang in it. Every Airbnb in the world with a hot tub is uh, the is, world becomes your oyster, which yeah. is one Airbnb away. So what what happens with that? What, what, you find out like, oh, people are coming to the site. I'm getting traffic, but they don't own a hot tub, so they don't get. So they don't buy my, they don't click on any affiliate right. links. They don't buy my, my books and courses there. It's right. useless traffic that I am paying for to come to my website. Right. So there's also like articles that were very, 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 very specific and weren't very long. And so you take an article that's uh, maybe not getting a lot of traffic because the keyword's not very strong, but the, the content and the value of it is strong, but it belongs into another bigger post. Like it's post. part of a bigger yep. post. So like, and then that what's that post is already doing well. And so you're taking this tiny little piece of content that gets no traffic, but you're taking that and sticking it into something that does get traffic and it helps you to keep that post at the top or rank for a, a much smaller keyword or, a, or a, a, a plethora of smaller keywords. And so uh, that's why I did that. So, um, and I think when people are like auditing their site, there's kind of three actions when you go pull everything out, it's um, delete it, improve it, or merge it with something yeah. else. And to me, the big thing you want to stay away from is keyword cannibalization. You don't ever want to confuse Google. There right. should be one ultimate guide to, to cleaning your hot tub. You shouldn't have three posts that are about cleaning your hot tub because right. you're going to confuse Google. So sometimes as we create content over six, seven years, you look back, you're like, man, I got three posts that are kind of about the same thing. Merge, Merge. right? Bring them yeah, together. Consolidate. And then you're going to see that I got seven or eight posts that get zero traffic and they've literally yes. gotten zero traffic for two years. Delete them. Google mm -hmm. doesn't like them. Your people don't like them. Get them off your site. Remove it from the crawl budget. Um, and just it, it, it just improves the user experience. I've deleted dozens and dozens and dozens of posts from my website in the last yep. year to try to just like, eh, that's, it's not great. Or I already have another post about it. Get rid of it. 301 right. redirect it somewhere, merge it somewhere and on to the next. Have you seen any increase in traffic when you, after you did that? 
Totally. Yeah, yeah. totally. hundred percent. Um, absolutely. And I've seen rankings go up on Same. the posts that I merged them into. Mm-hmm. And we we've, we've been doing this with my wife's site for a very long time. And so you put up a post, it does well. And then over time you, you're, you're falling down because other people are coming after you. Yeah. So you improve it, you merge it, you update it, boom. And there you jump right yeah. back up. It's a, and it's an ongoing process. Like I did an audit once and then literally every year or multiple times a year, I will do an audit on swim university and my other sites to, I mean, I'm deleting content even to this day, you know, that doesn't, it's just yep. not working or it's, it's not, I'll delete it, but then take the content and move it and shift it somewhere else and all that stuff. Um, and this is why I say, this is why I rally against passive income. This is not passive. It always takes work. It always, you yeah, always have always to go look at something. things. It, you're always working on something. Uh, do you have any tips or suggestions on monetizing a directory site? For example, best parks in the United States. Ads. I mean, you know, yeah. like camping maybe, uh, but like it, it's, it's pretty directory sites are by definition, um, not great user intent. It's like, I need a giant list of things. Um, so just, if you run ads, if you run, like, if you put display ads, a lot of them are going to end up being uh, retargeting ads. So people are going to see stuff they were just looking at at Amazon anyways. And like, oh yeah, I wanted to buy that click buy. And you're actually kind of creating That's a it. fair user experience. But yeah. like what value can a directory site give? Like what's the unique value that you can give with a directory site? Because anyone can go run a scraper bot that's going to go scrape together a bunch of this, that, the other and make a directory site. Like they're, they're completely automatable. So it's kind of like, what's the what's the unique benefit that you're actually providing to your audience is a bigger question. Let me ask you a question about um, a, a, th- a thought that I'm planning on doing in March. So uh, okay. I have the site Brew Cabin, which is all about homebrewing. And so mm-hmm. the idea is I am sitting on spreadsheets that I put together myself of every single possible ingredient that you could add into a beer. And the idea is to create a directory or some sort of useful sort of online tool so that you know how to build recipes and you can you can pick like this malt works with this hop and this whatever, this yeast is good for these styles of beers or whatever. Uh, and the idea being that, like, I will rank for very, very small keywords, but a lot of them and get traffic to a site where those people are the people I'm trying to attract to buy a course that I have. Do you think that that is different from something like creating a directory site where the product maybe is a little bit, I don't know what it is or like who I'm like, because yep. I feel like best parks in the United States kind of sucks because Anybody can go to a park for a myriad of reasons, right? Right. Exactly. That's exactly it. Right. But yours is is people brewing, so it's like oh, coriander, or banana peel, or right, all these little bits and pieces. So I would I would do the keyword research, and the 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 actual question is is the juice worth the squeeze? squeeze. Mm-hmm. Um, because you you know just like it would absolutely distract you from making more videos, and your videos right. probably have a much better chance of of doing way better at selling you as the guy I want to learn this from because, God, he's fun and he makes cool videos. Sure. If I'm going to go through a video course on beer brewing, it's not going to be the guy who built some geeky little software tool that tells me coriander can go three grams in a Belgian right. white. I-, I want the guy who like is fun and funny and makes music videos, and I know he'll make learning enjoyable. So the opportunity cost to me does not feel like it would be there. Um, but could you automate the whole thing would be a question. Mm. Um. I don't know who this is, Bob, somebody. Uh, what about those reviews who are getting money for positive reviews? Is there any way to expose that bad behavior? No. Google Google will get rid of all of the search engine spam eventually. Um, but just is what it is. Part of the game. Uh, sponsored posts. Announced sponsored posts. Unannounced sponsored posts. It's it's a big, shady world. Um, mm. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, we don't have any other questions that I can see. Uh, so, uh, we can wrap this up. Miles. There we go. (laughs) What the hell are you doing? The video changed. I I don't know. You pushed a button and all of a sudden I was like out of my shot and I had to lower my chair. You know, I gotta be, gotta be like, you know, I, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get you set up prior to going live. We kind of just went live, but, um, is there, look, it's milesbeckler.com. It's That's me. It's your YouTube channel, Miles Beckler. It's the same guy on both of them. It's the same actually. guy. There's an L yep. in Beckler. Be yeah, very clear. totally. Um, yeah, and it's not Mike's either, um, even though autocorrect seems to like to make me Mike's Beck- Oh, really? Beckler. Oh, people comment all day long. And Who the hell's hey, name Mike's? is Mike's? This is great. 
Yeah, I don't know. And and who's autocorrect doesn't realize that my name is actually a distance, so it's actually a word. So, and yeah, and I, who I has ever said the word ducking? Ducking. Like, yes. How um, often is that used in actual language? Turducken. 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 Ducking. Are we John Madden over here? <laughs> Yeah. Um, um, so yeah. No, so, and and so I've got one of the things that I've done on my YouTube channel that would probably be relevant for people if if they search. Um, I've reviewed multiple times um, different affiliate sites. I did one that was thirteen affiliate sites reviewed, and I did another one that was seven figure blogs reviewed. So if you just search Miles Beckler, comma yeah, um, affiliate that, yeah. site review, I've got a few of these where I break down and, and look at and talk about the process because you'll see a pattern. What we talked about here, and then what I talk about on those, you're like, okay. It is, they're actually, it, it is kind of formulaic. The key, the trick is how do you spin a little art into that formula? How do you spin some unique stuff to make yourself really, truly helpful and, and, um, stand out. And I think you're doing a great example with that, with your, with your homebrew site. And, um, mm -hmm. I just lead with pure education is my approach. And, right. um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's fun. Yeah. All of your videos are just like highly, highly valuable and i mean i don't they're mean dense. that huh they're dense right they're like dense they're dense but like they're not they're 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 kind of like the one that i watched with email marketing where you you were talking about all the different types of lead magnets to grow your list you know and you but you what's interesting about it is well i was i was kind of scrubbing through because i was just waiting for you to go i don't really like this method i don't really like this method and i'm waiting for you to say i like th this one i really like and i was like all right, now I'm going to watch that whole section because it's like you the thing that I think you offer that most people don't is opinion. Opinion based on what? 15 20 years of like yeah. uh you know, doing this and failing and succeeding and then mostly failing and then sometimes succeeding and it's like through all of this this roller coaster that you've been on it's like okay, I still don't have all the answers, but here's what I do know. And I know this very, yeah. very well, and this has worked for me in my industry. And I think like, I wish a lot more people sort of offered that online like you do. So that's, and I, and you know, when I asked people on Twitter way back in the day before we met, which was like, who is doing online business on YouTube correctly? Like who's like not, you know what I mean? Like who's doing it right? And it was just like, you, 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 like people were just like mentioning you, you, you. And then it was just like, and then maybe like, you are, you're doing it or Pat Flynn's doing it, but it's like mostly miles, um, which is yeah. that you can own that domain if you want to mostly miles.com. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not a porno. That's no, also not, not even close. That's, that's miles long.com. Um, oh God. <laughs> is it really? No, that's not right. That, that was my radio name back in, in college. Miles it, long. Why didn't you, why didn't you, well, mine was Matt, mine was Matt Stevens. Oh yeah. That's my that's middle name. Definitely is Steven. A porn name. Yeah, yeah, you probably had a mustache at that point in time too. Just, I, just like the. I definitely had a mustache. You can Google yeah, it for sure. Yeah, uh, uh, or I can what, go through your time machine post and see all of it there. What's that? Oh, you can go through your time machine post. I should have put it up. I didn't put the the mustache post up. But listen, thank you for doing this, man. Appreciate it. Um, yeah. you know, check out check out milesbeckler.com. I read. I read. Uh, what was the one I re I just read the Facebook ad one. There's a Facebook oh, cool. ad post that I read. Um, so yes, your, your stuff helps me and I, and maybe, uh, either offline or, um, next, a uh, next, uh, we come back on money lab live. We'll critique my shit. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. I'll be all about it. Hopefully yeah, like, you under the really fire. like, put, for everybody, like really you know, like, give it to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like everybody watching, like, it's so easy to nitpick all these little things, but like, and we didn't do a disclaimer at the beginning, but like, yeah, these people are building stuff. They're going, yeah. they're in motion. They're like, and we all, we, it's just, it's an ever, it's an evolution that takes forever. Like I got gaps and holes and I'm missing things like cobblers have got holes in his shoes too. And we all sure. have room for improvement, but it's that, it's that perpetual willingness to show up every single day. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna move this a little bit forward. I'm gonna move this forward. I'm gonna make this a little bit better today. I'll optimize this today. And um, I hope people have seen kind of a flow that they can follow and realizing the promise and are we being clear and are we really giving our audience what they want up front? Like, like that really actually is the key even at the affiliate marketing level. Yeah, cool. Um, appreciate it. We're going to end the show. Uh, thank you everybody for watching. Tune in next week, Wednesdays like, at 2 p.m. Thumbs like, up. Subscribe, like, subscribe. Subscribe. Hit that bell. Thumbs up. Hit that bell. What's the bell do? The bell doesn't do shit. Smash that like Smash button, Smash that bro. like button, bro. 
I'm going to go flex in front of my Lambo for a while and just be like, yeah, I'm going to go flex in front of my pawns. <laughs> All right. I like it. Take it easy, man. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.